Welcome to stage green. So this is the penultimate stage we'll be talking about in this series. I may come back and redo some later stages as uh, as time goes on, but this is the penultimate one that we're gonna be talking about in uh, this series for now. Now stage green is a very interesting stage, um, as all of them are in many different ways. Um, as we go up the spiral to the later and later stages, we're gonna find that less and less of us are at that stage. And so, uh, you know, for me personally, I have a lot more at stage orange than I do at stage green. Um, and so stage green uh, might be more and more challenging for people. And, and you'll find as we go through the stages, you're gonna find the stages more and more challenging as you progress. Um, uh, depending on where you're at, unless you're a, 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 in a very, very developed person that may find themselves at a, a stage yellow um, or, or maybe at green already. Um, again, when I talk about people being at a certain stage, I'm talking about the majority of their psyche, you know, more than 50% or so of them um, being at that stage. Uh, and so with that said, let's look at stage uh, green. Now stage green can be uh, most commonly called postmodern. And so while stage orange was modern, uh, stage. Uh, green is postmodern. Uh, you may have heard the term postmodernism and postmodern thrown around a lot and, and that it does overlap a lot with what we're talking about here. Um, this stage is also known as the fulfilling stage, the relativistic stage, which is very postmodern, right? Uh, the caring stage, the communal stage, uh, pluralistic stage, uh, the culturally caring stage, and the reflective stage. Um, so there's quite a lot of different terms uh, for stage green, but you're probably most commonly going to hear this term postmodern um, associated with this stage. Now, we talked about when the stages come onto the scene. Uh, well, stage green comes onto the scene very late in the game. Really only about 150 years ago did people start really interacting um, at this stage and developing to this stage. And practically, reality um, it only really came onto the stage in um, in somewhere like America uh, much, much later. We're talking the maybe the 60s, really, the, the green started to explode and started to become um, a stage that you would see people be at predominantly. Um, and so it took a long time for that to really take root. And so up until probably the, the uh, mid-1900s, you were only going to see people at this stage largely in uh, Western and Northern Europe. In fact, today you are probably only going to see, if you're looking for people that are predominantly green, more green than any other color, um, you're going to find them predominantly in Northern Europe, uh, you know, Scandinavian countries, um, some of Western uh, countries, some of the countries like um, Germany and places like that may, be, um, may have a lot of people that are very green. Um, America is still very, very uh, minimally green. Even people that are uh, identify with a lot of what we're saying here, if, if, you, if you have some green in you, as I'm going through the traits and the values, you're gonna be like, yes, yes, that's what I'm about. Um, you may be uh, predominantly green if that's the case, but realistically, you're probably only partially green, uh, and part of you is really excited about that. But maybe in some areas of your of your psyche, you're going to be very hesitant to embrace some green values, and that's that's something you're going to have to work through and develop and grow through. Um, so be aware of that as as we're going through it. Practically, um, about five to ten percent of the world are at stage green. Okay, so if you're looking at the global adult population in the world, only about five to 10% can say that they're predominantly at green. Um, of course, I wouldn't say they're predominantly at green because many people don't are aware of this uh, stage and most people aren't uh, aware of stages and, and this kind of development at all until, the, until later uh, on in the spiral at, at stage yellow and beyond. Um, but that's how many people, generally speaking, are gonna be at this kind of level of psyche. Um, Stage green really was a reaction to straight stage orange. And so while uh, stage orange uh, had this uh, modernity, the modern stage, modern uh, consciousness came to the point that science can explain everything and it's all about rationality and science. Well, um, stage green was a reaction to that as we realized that, well, we can't really know everything purely through rational and science. There's some things that we don't know and we don't have answers for, and maybe we may have answers for them in the future, but actually at times, we just don't know. Um, and also, at Stage Green starts to um, break through 
uh, this third person perspective. So the, the, the third person perspective of Orange that observes and criticizes and rationalizes and experiments and, and looks at it scientifically, that third person view on the world and trying to be objective. Well, stage four breaks out of, uh, uh, sorry, stage four, stage green breaks out of that into a fourth person perspective, which then observes the observer. It looks at itself and goes, well, I'm biased. So yeah, I can rationally look at things objectively, but I'm not objective. And so stage uh, green starts to unravel this concept of, of, of absolutism and of um, uh, reductionism and, and, and uh, you know, this overly emphasized rationality, scientist, uh, scientism, uh, all, all this kind of stuff, this clear cut objectivity. I can tell everything because I observe it. Um, if I can't observe it and, and put it down on paper yet, I will at some point be able to do that. Green starts to react from that. And so again, green is a swing. Um, so as we're going up in a spiral, as we're adding circles on the circles, and, and so blue uh, had red and purple in it, and then orange encapsulated blue and so on and so on down the circle. So again, we see green, it, it's a circle around uh, stage orange. And so it transcends stage orange. It, it grows beyond the problems and the, and the issues of stage orange, but it includes the good and the valuable in stage orange. Now, it doesn't always perfectly do this. All of the stages struggle with this. And, and until much later, well, until stage yellow, the next stage, we're gonna see that most stages as they transcend and include the good, um, they often fail to include a lot of the goods because they demonize the prior stage so much. They focus so much on the bad of that prior stage that they, they throw out the baby with the bathwater. And green is no exception to this either. Green also tends to throw the baby out with the bathwater and reject a lot of, um, a lot of stage orange uh, dynamics. Um, so while... Uh, while orange was individualistic, um, we saw the, the bouncing and the back and forth and the swinging of the pendulum. We see again that uh, green swings back into this community concept. And so where we had purple being very community orientated, this tribal view, and then we went to red and it was very egotistical, the warrior, it's all about me. Then we went back to blue and it was about um, our group, our nation, our church, our denomination, our perspective. Then we swung back to orange and it became about me, my individual relationship, my individual uh, growth, my individual connection with God, my individual observation of the universe and rationally uh, deciding what was right and what was wrong. And uh, we see again a swing back to community in green. And so green swings back to this perspective of it's about us. But the, the, this, this concept of we broadens. And so as we said, each time this, we, we develop and we grow in the spiral, we include the past. And so it includes the, the concepts of the past, um, community-driven ideas like so blue was very much about my tribe my community my uh, nation so it was bigger than just the tribal concept of just a few hundred people maybe it was the, the, the it was about my nation maybe it's about my church or my denomination my, my group of churches that fall into the same group as me and believe the same thing and um, so blue had evolved and grew grew but orange started to see well actually each individual has worth and so while it was very individualistic it became a bit more world centric it became a bit more aware of the world and so as we see green swing back to a community driven uh, and community focused uh, perspective what we're going to see is that our uh, that, that green is going to take some of those elements of orange uh, this understanding of each human has worth and individual value and it becomes global in its perspective and so stage green becomes very global in its community. Um, it's no longer about my nation, it's about us, it's about humans, it's about humanity. Um, and so it's really um, an interesting dynamic that we'll, we'll see as we look at the traits and the values and things. One thing I wanted to say, um, there was some stuff in stage orange that I really didn't get to. I felt like I was running out of time and then I, and then I got a bit uh, probably flustered and forgot to mention a couple of things. Um, but I wanted to come, uh, back to stage orange as we talk about green and talk about how stage orange develops into green um, because I missed some key elements and, and we're going to go over this in a specific video um, that's going to be related to how people deconstruct their faith and what it looks like through the lens of spiral dynamics because stage orange really is one of the most important stages for this. Stage green is hugely important as well as part of that process 
but stage orange is huge. Um, and a lot of stage orange, some of the negative elements of stage orange is in this individualistic, rational, ob observation-based uh, uh, reality, um, there's a real disconnect from the person of God, right? We talked about that 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 second person connection, the, the, the person God that you can talk to and worship and pray to and, and, and you know, engage with and he can interact in your world and help you. That, that God starts to um, dissolve a little bit and becomes kind of, it just falls between your, your fingers like sand. You, you don't know what to do. And it, it can be very scary, very isolating. Um, you, you no longer connect with the community that you were a part of that was so, so solid at stage blue. Um, and so you lose your community, you can be very alone, you can be very isolated. And so stage orange, part of its transformation and part of green coming about is stage orange feeling disconnected, feeling uh, alone and yearning for community, yearning for relationship, uh, relationship with other believers, other people like them, but also relationship for, with God because it did have in its prior stages, even in, um, even in negative expressions of purple, red and blue, there was still some level of a connection to God. And so uh, while they all had positive expressions, even in the negative expressions, um, those uh, elements still had this connection to God and orange just seems to lose that connection in many ways for many people. Now not always, uh, many people navigate through stage orange without losing that connection uh, fully um, but that can be a real transformational dilemma, it can be a real push into this stage of stage green and so um, I just wanted to say that because um, Many people might not have picked that up. I think I went into enough depth that if you are in that place, you're probably able to identify that that's you in, in stage orange. But just in case you weren't, um, if you're in that place of feeling very disconnected, feeling very alone, feeling um, you, you, you miss your relationship with God, you don't know how to pray, you don't know how to worship, you don't know how to um, connect to God anymore, um, it's very likely that you're in the mix of that orange uh, mindset and that orange uh, worldview, okay? so. Now we've covered that, let's look at some key um, aspects, some, some traits, some values of stage green. Now, before I begin, let's say again, just for the record, that it's really important you understand that no stage is right or wrong good or bad. They are just the stages of development, okay? So they are really important for us to grow and develop. They bring solutions to our prior stage that had problems, but they bring new problems to the stage. New problems that haven't existed before or maybe slightly different nuances of prior problems uh, that are still being refined and worked on. And so it's really important that we don't uh, fixate on the problems of the new stage. If we are in a prior stage, we need to fixate on the good of that stage and how it might bring solutions to our current problems. Because otherwise we are gonna resist growing, we're gonna resist developing, we're gonna resist moving forward into the stage. So if you're at stage orange, stage orange does not like the thought that stage green is quote unquote above it. Uh, now, again, that's very hierarchical, that's very good, bad, better, worse mentality, which shouldn't be a part of this, okay? So it shouldn't be how you think, but at Stage Orange, it really is often how we think. Um, so it's gonna be really hard for people that are at that stage, Stage Orange, or, or earlier, to think of something like Stage Green as being beyond or the next step, because there's gonna be plenty of stuff within Stage Green that really, really uh, puts us off, that, that, that angers us, that that um, rubs us the wrong ways, it just triggers where we're at. Um, and we need to be aware of that. We need to be open. We need to um, avoid resisting what we need to grow into. Um, and so be on the lookout for what's good about these stages. What be, be aware of what's negative, absolutely, that's fine. But be focusing on what's good, be focusing on how it can bring solutions to the problems that you find yourself in at your stage. And so if you're at stage orange and I've talked about all those transformational dilemmas, um, be thinking about those transformational dilemmas. Maybe some of them you're already finding, but maybe you haven't come to those points yet and, and you will. And so when you do, remember what I'm talking about here at Stage Green, okay? Um, and as I said, if you're at Stage Green, you're gonna listen to me go through these uh, traits and values and go, yes, this is it. This is what life's about. 
Um, and so generally speaking, that's how you know you're at a stage is when you watch the video of the stage um, that I've done, if you get really pumped and you're like, yes, that's what it's about. It's all about spiritual warfare. It's all about fighting the devil. Welcome to Stage Red. You have a good idea where you are in this area. Um, you know, if you're all about, yes, it's about building a business, succeeding, developing something for yourself, becoming the best self you can be, you know, uh, all of that different stuff, you're gonna probably find yourself in stage orange, right? If it's all about rationality and science, well, we can figure this out for ourselves, that's very stage orange. Now the, the nuance in that is sometimes you carry some of those values as you keep going because you've transcended and included what's good from the prior stage. So don't, um, don't necessarily pigeonhole yourself by any means, but also be aware you're going to want to place yourself higher up the spiral than you are. And so be really careful for that as well. Um, that probably in the same way that um, stage red will try and paint itself as orange and orange will try and paint itself as yellow, blue will rarely paint itself as green. Um, so that's not so much of an issue. And we're going to find that's because blue is far too inclusive of uh, of the globe, of the world, of other people that are outside of our group and believe differently than us. And blue doesn't like that. And so blue's not likely to identify with green um, in the way that orange might identify with uh, yellow or red might identify with orange. Okay, let's look at these traits. So green sees an uh, influx of a focus on humanity and, and, and humanistic values. Uh, and so you're gonna see um, a great focus on every person having value. Um, <clears throat> green is gonna put things like color, creed, race, um, you know, nationality, uh, sexuality, gender. Those are so not what determines someone's worth at stage green. Stage green values individuals, people. Um, and so it, it, it doesn't go for the caste systems that were uh, possible in stage blue and, uh, and before. Um, it, it's grabbed a lot of that individualist, uh, individualism and individual uh, equality and individual rights from orange. And it's, it started to become a lot more humanistic in a way it, it sees things. Um, it generally rejects the materialism of stage orange, of the, the prior stage, just amassing wealth, amassing things. Um, stage green is going to want less stuff in their house. They're going to get very Marie Kondo, you know, and, and start minimalizing their homes and getting rid of everything they don't need. Um, you know, they want as, as few, little furniture as possible, as little baggage as possible. They start to understand that materialism and things don't bring happiness and success. Um, and so generally speaking, it's gonna reject that kind of materialism, that kind of capitalistic like um, consumerism, that kind of mindset just is not um, gonna sit well with people at stage green. There's a, a return to uh, spirituality. Now I say spirituality uh, cautiously because there's a lot of very healthy spirituality at this stage, but there's also a, a very unhealthy element to spirituality. Um, at stage green, there's a danger of being 100 miles wide and just a couple of inches deep. Um, and so stage green starts to accept all spirituality, everything. And so a little bit like um, stage orange, which really struggled to determine between pre-rational spirituality and post-rational spirituality, well, green starts to explore post-rational uh, spirituality, but it also often embraces pre-rational spirituality. It starts to re-embrace a lot of those um, prior beliefs and ideas. Um, and so you'll see green being open to multiple spiritual traditions, you know, so uh, someone that is Christian that goes through to stage green may lose a lot of their faith in, in stage orange and be starting to rebuild some of their concepts of spirituality and God in stage green will generally speaking, start looking towards other faiths. They'll look at Islam, they'll look at Hinduism and Buddhism and, and new age principles. That's going to be very, very common at stage green. Stage green believes there is truth in all traditions in all faiths, um, that no one has the, 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 the soul rights to truth, you know? And so maybe, yes, they might hold to that Christianity has some of the best uh, to some degree. On the whole, stage green is far too um, all embracing and relativistic to say that all truth is held by any one camp. Um, and so stage green will generally accept truth from anywhere. Um, You'll see at stage green, people starting to do things like new age, yoga, meditation, contemplation. And some of these things might have been entertained at stage orange, but they would have been entertained solely from a, a rational, practical, pragmatic sense. And so yoga would have been done, but it would have been done for the health benefits. Meditation would have been done, but it would have been done because um, 
I read a, an article about how scientists have proved that if you meditate for 20 minutes a day, it can re reduce your blood pressure and it can alleviate stress. It's not gonna be uh, meditation to connect with your inner self. It's not gonna be meditation to connect with the, the great oneness of, of creation or, or the divine or any of these kind of more spiritual elements. It's not gonna be yoga to center yourself and connect to the divine. That's not gonna be the sort of um, yoga meditation that's practiced at Stage Orange, but it is the focus of Stage uh, Green. Now, Stage Green does this at a really surface level. Uh, they do it um, as, as they're almost tiptoeing in those areas. They don't dive deep. They don't go into the rich traditions of, of different spiritualities. They don't really dive deep and, and try and find uh, truth in them. They, they, they would probably just more do cursory uh, looks at it. Uh, but but that's not always true. Some some do go deep. Some, some do focus on that, especially if your job is that or something like that. You might really go quite deep in those areas. But generally speaking, Stage Green is going to be, um, uh, like I said, 100 miles wide, but just a few inches deep when it comes to uh, spirituality and so it can seem very spiritual but actually uh, when we dig deeper there might be a lot less spirituality there than there appears. Um, stage green will see similarities and not just differences so at the prior stages there was this big obsession with what are our differences and and differences were focused on again and again and again now stage green starts to and I say starts because it still loves some differences at times um, but it starts to, uh, to ask itself, well, what are our similarities? What connects us? What brings us together? What are the things that join us rather than the things that divide us? Um, and so this is a key part for uh, Stage Green, which wants to be more global, wants to be more inclusive, wants everyone to be together, wants peace and love and these kind of things. Um, it's gonna try and focus on those elements. Um, and so it may even begin to be able to, at Stage Green, offer an olive branch to prior stages of faith. Um, so it might be able to look at uh, more traditional uh, models, so stage blue kind of uh, Christianity, or um, maybe even um, stage kind of like red and purple it might even look at and go, well, yeah, okay, I'm not where they are, but like, you know, there's truth in, in a lot of these things and, you know, we should be open to them and, and give them room to be them. That's who they are. Stage green is, is gonna be very big on like, well, let everyone be who they are, their truth, their understanding, their way. Um, that's a very stage green perspective. You know, it doesn't want to um, label anything as wrong uh, in a sense, uh, it, it wants to, you know, it wants to be so politically correct. It wants to be so um, aware that everyone has a little bit of truth and let's not um, judge too quickly. Let's not write anyone off too quickly. Now that's not always actually worked out. And so uh, many stage green people, uh, in fact, most stage green people will be very quick to um, decry people that are not doing that. And so in a sense, it becomes a little bit hypocritical, right? So it's it's inclusive of all, but it tries to push out anyone that's not inclusive. So as soon as you become exclusive, well, we don't, we, that's not allowed. We don't like that. We don't want that. And so it pushes out those that try to exclude um, in the name of inclusivity. But of course, it's not including the exclusive group. And so it becomes a bit of a, a, a uh, a messy duality that is kind of hard to wrap our heads around and it, and it leaves stage green at quite a quandary. Stage green really struggles with this, okay? So stage green is, is to some degree aware of this and to some degree totally blind to it. Um, stage green focuses on relationship. And so while stage orange was very internally focused, stage green becomes very outwardly focused. It focuses on the importance of relationship, on connecting with others, on building communities. Um, it really wants to understand other people. It's got a real drive to understand, develop empathy and compassion for other people. And it really wants to help others uh, have that same understanding and have that same developed empathy and compassion. Um, it, it, it's it's core. Uh, if you could sum up, excuse me, if you could sum up stage green with just a couple of words, it would probably be peace and love, okay? So, um, you know, if you're listening to this, you might be thinking, these are hippies, right? I mean, these are, this is the hippie movement. This is the 60s free love. It's all about peace and love, man. And you'd be right. That really is very, very, very green mentality. Now, it's not what all green people will look like. It's not what everyone will look like when they start to uh, embrace uh, a green uh, psyche and, and develop a, a green psyche but it's a very good picture of that for many people. You might think of something like um, 
Burning Man uh, is a great example. I'm kind of jumping into examples here, but Burning Man is a great example of stage green, right? It's this community that get together in the desert and they they uh, have absolute freedom. Anyone can do anything. You're not you're not meant to. No one can buy anything while they're there. You're just supposed to trade and share and give, um, and and it's completely free, right? And there's excesses on every end of the spectrum. But it's, it's all about love, it's all about peace, and it works tremendously well, right? You've got a city of, you know, I think it's about 80,000 people that get together and they all just love and share, one, uh, share with one another and, and give, and there's drugs and there's sex and there's all sorts of um, uh, wild excesses that would drive someone at stage blue or something like that absolutely insane. They would just blow up at the thought of it, and, and they do. Um, but then they leave and, and everything's completely tidy. You know, you could comb the desert and you wouldn't find a packet of chips, you know? I mean, it's just, it's, it's completely looked after and cared for because Stage Green loves the environment and and, and not having waste and, and caring for one another and the nature and, and, the, and the world. And, and so these are all very green uh, ways of thinking. But, but you're probably thinking of people as hippies, people that go to Burning Man, these liberals. Yes, 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 all very green in their mentality. Um, now again, that's going to cause real problems because someone at Blue or Orange, you're saying, what? What are you saying? These liberals are better than me? And I'm saying, no, no, no. This is not about better or worse, good or bad. It's about growing in our psyche. And so when as a human grows in their psyche, they will naturally start to develop these liberal concepts and principles. And it will come out like some of the things that you don't like. And sometimes it will come out like things that you do like. Um, but Ultimately, when you are there and when you are ready to be there, it will come out as whatever it needs to be like for you, okay? So you don't have to embrace all the bad bits and, and, and you probably won't even look like all the good bits either. It's going to be unique for you, but these are uh, some of the, the, the psyche, uh, this, is the, this is the path of the psyche's development. This is the direction that we're moving. So you need to get past the name calling and the writing off people because you can find some problems with it because there are problems at every level, okay? The key is, as you grow, focus at the problems on your level and focus at the good of other levels. That's how you grow, that's how you develop, that's how you become um, a more developed and, and, and healthier human, um, okay? So please try, as you're listening to this, not to write off this group just because it falls into a category that you've labeled and decided is wrong, okay? Because that's not how this works. Um, Stage Green is uh, very big into seeing every culture is valid and they, they should preserve every culture, right? We should try and um, preserve that tribal culture. We shouldn't impose our way on them. We shouldn't go into Iraq and make them a democracy. Maybe we, maybe Iraq needs to be what it needs to be right now. And it's, it's very much about preserving original culture. Or maybe we could go into Iraq and we give them the freedoms because it's all about freedoms and, and it's all about uh, those kind of principles but we should make sure that we protect the way that they do life and their culture and their identity. We shouldn't impose our Christianity on their Islam. And that's a very stage green way of seeing things. Um, stage green is all about helping the poor. It's about equality. Um, it's, it, stage green uh, just cannot cope in the face of inequality. It goes nuts. It really, really, it really wants and desires equality. So where stage orange intellectually wanted um, every person to be free, to, be, uh, to have their individual rights and, and autonomy, and they can make their own way in the world and they should have freedom to do that. Um, stage green goes nuts when it sees that that doesn't work. And so in stage orange, um, where some people had a better opportunity, they were born into a better family, they had better education, they were born into the right country in the right part of the world, whatever it might be, and they made great uh, things for themselves or establish a huge business or make much wealth or whatever it was or just have better health because they were born in a certain town rather than another town, right? Um, it, it, stage Orange looks at that and goes, well, you know, they should have just tried harder, you know? Like if, if that person in Flint, Michigan that doesn't have clean water that's getting lead poisoning, really, I mean, if they just hunkered down, they got better grades, they'd be able to move out of town and get a job and then make something great for themselves and maybe they would start a, a water processing company and come into Flint, Michigan and fix it all, you know? But that's how Orange would fix this solution, you know? Um, it would use the free market, it would use power, it would use um, working hard, it would be, use, you know, the individual driven mentality. 
but it fails to see that, well, that's seen from a town where you're not getting lead poisoning that affects the way you think, that affects your, your energy levels, that affects all sorts of different stuff. You're not seeing people around you dying. You're not seeing these um, big issues trying to pay your bills. You know, Flint, Michigan has the highest water bills in, in America, apparently, um, even though it's, you know, only an hour away from the largest uh, freshwater landmass in America and the third largest freshwater landmass in the whole world. It still pays more for freshwater than anywhere else. <laughs> um, you know, so there's all these kind of elements that stage green starts to go, well, I don't think it's possible for that person just to pull themselves up by the bootstrap and just make do. And so stage green focuses on this inequality and it sees this and it gets upset about this and it wants to fix this. It wants to right this. This is wrong. This is unjust. Um, so just a, an example, you know, and I don't know the ins and outs of everything to do with Flint. And so I'm not trying to make a, a big statement about how to fix the infrastructure there or, or anything political because I don't know the, the policies and things at play there. Um, I'm just using an example of someone born there probably doesn't have as great an opportunity as someone born in New York City or someone born in San Francisco, right? Um, if you're born into um, a ghetto, if you're um, a certain race, African-American in America, you know, you, you're statistically proven that yes, you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but, but you have a lot going against you, right? You're more likely to have a worse education. You're more likely to uh, come from a broken family. You're more likely to have parents that are never around because they're working multiple jobs. You're more likely to go to jail. Um, you're more likely to be exposed to crime and drugs. Um, and so, yes, you can do all that you can do in stage orange mindset, but you have a lot working against you that other people, as hard as it is for them to succeed, don't have as many of those things working against them. And stage green starts to see this. Stage orange tends to be quite blind to this. The only way stage orange starts to see this is through data. And so if, the, if you can expose stage orange to enough uh, scientific, rational, cold, hard facts, they like that, they can feed on that and they start to build their worldview around that. So they can start to see that and start thinking about that. That starts pushing them um, into stage green. And it's, it's actually a big part of, you know, people like um, uh, Bill Gates, who we talked about, was very orange, but has started to shift into green and actually Bill is maybe even yellow. We'll talk about that at stage yellow maybe. But um, part of that is, is they're very data driven. They're trying to hard, cold facts. How do we make the world a better place? And, and this is the sort of things they are, they're exposed to, inequalities and, and things like that. And so they go, well, how do we fix the inequalities? How do we, how do we deal with those things? Um, and so this is very stage green thinking. They, they are all about bringing equality to people. Um, and so it's not saying stage green don't think that everyone should have exactly the same paycheck and you know all that sort of thing. They're not communists. Um, so this is a big, big difference that stage, um, stage uh, orange, which can be very um, capitalistic and very free markets and all that, will see stage green, which tends to value something like socialism. They see that as communism or, or the, the more um, simplistic forms of socialism that, that's, that simply didn't work. You know, they are stage blue. It's things like, you know, communist Russia and China and things like that. Yes, no, they, they don't work as well. We're, we're aware of that. We've grown and we've developed. But um, what we what they fail to do, stage orange, is they see models of socialism that work extremely well. You know, so they look at somewhere like, they fail to see somewhere like um, Norway. So when, when someone at stage orange is gonna attack socialism, they're gonna pick somewhere like Venezuela or, uh, or you know, Russia or something like that and go, oh, you know, look at that, that's what happens there. Um, but they fail to ever bring up, oh yeah, have you looked at Norway? It actually works very well in that concept. And that's because Norway's socialism isn't communism, right? It's this m mixed blend of, uh, of uh, trying to be free market, it's trying to be capitalistic, but it's also having socialism, it's also having um, welfare for, for the poor, for the unemployed, uh, it has free education for all. So it's, it's this blend of, of people that are going, well, how do we make this ideal of orange, of everyone being individual autonomous people, people that can make the most for themselves, be individuals, but how do we do that as a group, making sure that people don't fall behind, making sure that no one's left there going, but I don't have an opportunity to, right? Um, and so this is really green mentality. Tr trying to bring equality does not mean that everyone is the same. It means that everyone has the same opportunities, that people that fall behind. So green really cares about, um, you know, the disabled. It really cares about um, minorities. It really cares about um, LGBTQ. It cares about people that tend to have um, some form of disadvantage because of a, a classification that society uh, places on them. 
uh, green cares beyond humans as well. So green starts to care not just about individuals, but it cares about animals, right? So you're gonna see green caring that animals are treated well. It's gonna care that uh, plants and, and plant life, right? And so while some of us might go, well, yeah, I don't want you know giraffes to go extinct, you know, that would suck we're less caring about, oh, I don't really care if poison ivy goes extinct, right? Or mosquitoes. But green is whole spread across the board. It doesn't, it, it thinks that every life has value and we shouldn't want anything to be going extinct, anything to be destroyed, anything to be abused. Um, and so it deeply cares about the environment and, and, and anything that inhabits this planet. Green cares about, it really does care um, for those things. So you're going to see green being very big into activism, into environmentalism. You're going to see, um, you know, uh, very big into climate change, things like that. That's going to be very green mentality. The only people you're going to see at orange at that level are people that are focused on the, the data, on science, because that does strongly support that kind of stuff. So they'll, they'll see that. But generally speaking, orange is so selfish and self-driven that if in any level, something like climate change or something uh, disadvantages orange, it will even try and pick and choose things like science and, and data to support its position. So you'll see people saying, well, there's also science saying that there isn't global warming, even though that you know the 0.1% of the data out there supports that, um, and 99.9% .9 of the data supports something else. You know that they'll, they'll pick and choose what they can. Um, green is gonna be so fixated on the environment um, that whether the science was there or not, they would want to be looking after the earth and caring for the earth. But of course they have the science and they do have that, that some of that rationality that's brought, that's been transcended and included from orange. And so green is gonna really care about this stuff and really focus on this stuff. And that's gonna really bother people at stage, um, at earlier stages that care less about the environment. The, the earth is for us, it's our benefit. Whereas green sees much more, we are to benefit the earth. We are to look after the earth much more than the earth is for our benefit and for us to, to take what we want from it. Um, there's a deep empathy uh, at stage green. It really cares, it really does. Um, you'll hear the phrase bleeding heart, right? These bleeding heart liberals or, or, or things like that. It, but that's because they really are bleeding hearts. They really do have a heart for other people. They really care at this stage. At stage green, you're gonna develop a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion. Um, you're really gonna hurt when other people hurt to degrees that don't happen before. And this is why actually I said um, something that helps orange transition is is some form of deep, 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 deep uh, suffering or loss, you know, a loss of a loved one, or maybe you get very ill, or maybe you get divorced, or something very tragic happens, can open you up to new levels of empathy and caring and compassion. And that can really push you and, and, and kind of be a catalyst in, in moving you into stage green. Um, green is very multicultural. Green isn't going to um, be as bothered by things like, oh, you know, the, the this town that used to be predominantly white or or this town that used to be predominantly Indian, oh, it's less so now. It's much more multicultural. It's mo much more mixed. We don't care at green, right? Green, I don't care. It's fine. Who cares? Um, whereas certain other groups might be like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. This is our group, right? Blue might be much more, well, this is us. This is our group, our race, our nationality, our faith, our community, whatever it is. Green, because it's so global, embraces multicultural, it likes multicultural. And so what you're gonna find is uh, by part of that is you're gonna go to multicultural places on the earth. You go to somewhere like London, London is gonna be very green. Now it's also gonna be very orange because it's very capitalistic, it's very big banks, it's got all the big companies, it's, it's very commercial. So of course it's gonna be, it's very uh, consumerist and all that, so it's got a lot of orange, of course. But it's also because it's so multicultural um, and because it's in Western Europe, which is is, um, is fairly progressed along the, along the spiral, um, big cities like this will tend to be leaning towards something like green. So you're gonna see places like New York and San Diego and San Francisco and these places, they're starting to lean more green because they're the big multicultural cities that, that look quite diverse. Um, right, uh, sorry, I got confused and or I got lost there. Um, so for green, this is really interesting element. At green, there is no such thing as absolute truth. Now this, drives orange insane, it drives blue insane, it practically drives everyone insane. Um, but at green, because it's gained this kind of fourth perspective, this fourth, uh, fourth person perspective, this ability to look upon itself and go, well, I'm a bit biased here. So 
I'm the only person that can see objectively, right? Anything that I see, but I see it subjectively. So who, who who's trusting who? You know, I, I can observe the observer. Um, and so green starts to doubt itself. It starts to see that, well, truth is probably a bit relative to some degree, right? So what I see is true. You know, it's the story of the elephant, right? You know, the, the blindfolded people that all um, were asked to describe what animal it was. And someone grabbed the trunk and said, oh, it's a snake. And, you know, someone grabbed the other parts. And went, oh, it's probably this. And, 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 and the point is that they were all right. They all were seeing something that was true. They were feeling something true that is real, but their, their perspective caused them to see it incorrectly. And so truth is a bit relative. It depends on how we see it, right? You talk to a couple that's going through a breakup and you'll very quickly see that truth can be a bit relative because both will tell you the truth. Both will tell you their experience. But what's fascinating is the same event can look very different from two different eyes. Um, and so green becomes a lot more aware of this um, and it, it, it tends to reject um, absolutist truth. So uh, a truth that transcends all things and is absolute, it's certain, that's the way it is. Green tends to back away from that. Now green, generally speaking, will accept if you jump out a window, you're gonna go down. Gravity, yeah, we all kind of agree that that's gonna happen. So green is gonna, generally speaking, accept certain elements of that to some degree, but they might also go, well, yes, that's true, but how do we really know that we're going down? What is down? Is that down or is it up? How do we even define down and up? Maybe that's left. Well, what's going, you know, and so they're gonna get really postmodern on you, really abstract, really relativistic, um, and they're gonna to start to try and pull apart truth. And of course, to someone that is really rational and very uh, scientific, someone like Orange is gonna get very upset, or someone that's very um, locked in and rigid on what's black and white, like blue, is gonna get very upset by green. Um, but green is just starting to see another perspective. It's, it's growing up, it's developing, and, and this will continue to grow and green will work out some of the limitations of this. We'll see that there are limitations and negative elements to this, but this is also very healthy, good development. This is a healthy development of the psyche to see that, well, actually we are very biased people. And we talked about some of the negatives of, of stage oranges, you know, things like scientists can be biased by their own perspective or desires and therefore their science isn't necessarily always good science. Um, so green starts to see that. And some of the good of that is that it, it can do sometimes better science because it's more aware of its own biases and, and puts more checks in place because of that and things like that. Okay, so this isn't necessarily all negative that there's no absolute truth, but it's also not necessarily all good. It just is. Um, so for green, generally speaking, what is true for one culture might be quite tr uh, different for another culture. And so they will look at um, uh, as an Islamic uh, state in the Middle East and go, well, what's true for you might not be true for me as, a, as an American in Wisconsin that's a Christian, right? So these are two very different worldviews in very different cultures in very different cities um, around very different people. So maybe what's true for us might look different. Uh, and who am I to say that your truth isn't true? Um, and so this relativistic, this, this, uh, this, this hesitancy to be absolute about truth. Um, generally speaking, to green, absolute truth can't be found in one tradition, uh, through one argument, through one faith, uh, through one figurehead. Even um, for Christians at stage green, they will, generally speaking, start to distance themselves a bit from Jesus being the, the picture of absolute or only truth. Um, and so we'll talk about that a little bit later when we go into some of the spiritual elements of this and the, the Christian effects. But, um, but yeah, green is going to really struggle with these dynamics. Um, if orange was a stage that valued facts and logic, green is the stage that values feelings and experience. It's very experiential. It's very touchy-feely. Uh, and so that's a really good way to understand orange, uh, uh, green. Um, and, and of course, that's a good thing to bring into the mix, right? So as we transcend and include the facts and logic and reason of, of orange, it's good to bring in feelings and experience. Those are good human emotions that need to be in the mix. And so this is all uh, making us more well-rounded people as we, as we progress up this spiral. Um, green acts globally, right? So it's, it ceases to think very nationally. And so you're gonna see green speak out very loudly about things like war um, or things about, uh, uh, where one country is abusing another country, right? So green won't like it if, you know, you're building, uh, if, if Apple are making an iPhone and yet people in China are jumping off buildings because their working conditions are so bad, green is not gonna like that. 
Orange is kind of going to turn a blind eye and enjoy its iPhone. But green is going to go, well, I'm going to try and find a sustainable phone. And of course, it's going to have a nightmare because that's not very easy to do. But but green will try and do that, right? So green is going to stop shopping at the, the supermarket that sells dollar t-shirts. It's going to go, hmm, that just doesn't sit right with me. I need to look into how those t-shirts were made, who paid for them, right? Green wants a fair trade chocolate. It wants to it wants to trace the cocoa beans and make sure that the cocoa farmers were paid properly for their work. And, um, and so green is gonna be very um, global thinking. It's not gonna just think about itself. It's not gonna just think about how it operates um, and, and what benefits it and itself and its group of people, its family, its nation, its church, whatever it is, green is gonna be much more global. Um, green really struggles with hierarchy. So green is very anti-hierarchy. So you're gonna see at green stage, um, there's a real demonization of, of leadership, of people thinking they're better than others. Um, and this again can be very good, but it also can be really negative uh, because at the end of the day, whilst yes, some hierarchy is really uh, very toxic and very unhealthy, um, it's green fails to see that hierarchy is just part of nature right and so you're gonna have cells made from atoms like at, cells are a, a, a developed form of atoms right so they're, they're the next progression and you're gonna progress from that to you know uh, you know multi-celled organisms you're gonna progress from that for to uh, more complex organisms it, it's gonna there's gonna be a progression uh, up and there's also a progression down, right? So we look at the atoms and we can start digging deeper and go, oh, there's, there's, um, you know, there's electrons and protons. Oh, we can dig into them. Oh, there's quarks and and so there's constantly things like the circle, right? This, the, you know, we had purple and and then there's a circle around that that's red and so red in, is made up of purple, but it has a whole bunch of new stuff. And then blue is made up of red and purple, but it has a whole bunch of new stuff. In the same way, that is quite natural in society and life for. Um, for hierarchy to develop and 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 come about, um, right? And so yes, uh, in an equality sense, yes, the toddler is equal with the parent, but the parent is in a sense better if we're looking at preparing a meal for the family, if we're looking at explaining, um, you know, how to pay for the bills, and 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 or if we're looking at how to provide for the family. Yes, probably the parent is quote unquote better. Now they're just they're not better as a uh, as a human with intrinsic worth, right? Which is what Green's really uh, got a quibble with, but it fails to see the nuances of that. It fails to see that there is some hierarchy going on there. Uh, Arthur uh, Questler uh, calls this holons and holarchy. Um, so it talks about things that are made up holes uh, of holes. And so um, he talks about, you know, that uh, the, um, cells are made of atoms, that molecules are made of cells and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and some really interesting work is some of, his stuff is really worth reading, really interesting. Probably much better to read uh, Ken Wilber's commentary on that because it's a lot more uh, developed and he kind of takes away some of the rough elements of that and, and makes it a bit more uh, polished. Uh, Arthur's stuff was a bit interesting at times. Um, Grey uh, areas suddenly come back into play at stage green. So uh, blue was very black and white, of course, because it needed this rigid organization, rigid structure, rigid worldview that was given from on high. Orange started to evaluate that for itself, but was still very black and white a lot of the time because it was my black and my white, not just the the the, the God-given leadership's black and white or the or the monarchy's black and white. It was now my black and white, but. Uh, green starts to go well, black and white, but it's no absolute truth. It's, it's a lot more gray. It starts to be a lot less clingy to absolutes, and so black and white uh, thinking tends to be less of a focus at green, um, and that can be really, really healthy and bring a lot of good as we start to look at things more nuanced, more subtly. Um, green cares about um, Green, green is very big on embracing paradox because of that, right? So because black and white uh, paradoxical thinking doesn't really fit very well with stage blue or stage orange, it's often accepted but never delved into. Green loves to dive into paradoxical thinking. So green can be quite philosophical, uh, theological, um, at, 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 on quite deep levels because it can hold multiple uh, elements and go, oh, wow, this is a bit confusing. I don't know which is right, but maybe it's something gray. Maybe there's something to this, maybe. Now, green, green struggles to come to some conclusions because it doesn't like any absolutes. So it struggles to find finite conclusions in the way it thinks. Um, but it does like to think about these things. 
Um, so it embraces paradox. It, it generally, it, it values, it doesn't value facts, it values interpretations. And it sees very rarely facts, it sees interpretations. So see, even when uh, Orange would look at a scientific paper and go, oh, they said this and they did this test and they found that this many people, uh, that percentage of them did this, well, that's what's true, that's a fact. Orange, uh, sorry, Green will look at that paper and go, oh wow, so this is their methods and this is what they did and this is what they came to. Ha, ah, that's what they interpreted from that account. They won't necessarily be quick to say that's an absolute, therefore going forward. They're very reluctant to make an absolute. They're gonna use that to inform their decisions and how they live their lives and how they move forward maybe. They might even inform, uh, it might inform them to do different studies or tests to try and, uh, 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 disprove it or prove it. But it's gonna be very careful to, to say it's absolutely true and it's a fact. They're just gonna go, well, that was how we interpreted this uh, data, this study. Um, Green cares about justice for all, words, world peace. It, it In some ways it can come across as a bit of a mellow orange, right? So uh, it, it's chilled out a lot in, in its, uh, and its drive and its passions for itself. Uh, it's a lot more chill, just wants to love everyone, let's have peace, let's calm down a bit. But at the same time, it can be very uh, passionate, overexcitable. I mean, you know, Greens organize marches plenty, you know, so you're gonna see marches on um, uh, gun control, things like that, marches on women's rights, on, uh, you'll see gay parades, all very green things, uh, and so green, can be very chill, but at times it can be very excitable and very passionate. Um, and so again, can't be pigeonholed too easily in that sense. Green, you'll hear the phrase, enjoy the journey a lot, right? It's a very green mentality. We're just all on this journey. We're figuring it out. The truth is unraveling and, and being pieced together. It's all good, it's fine. Um, green is about social progress. It's about uh, liberalism. Uh, green cares about animals and children, the disabled, minorities, a lot of these groups that, that were less important at earlier stages. They, they you know, we didn't run around killing children and disabled people necessarily at earlier stages, although that has been an extreme of some earlier stages. Um, uh, but uh, Green suddenly looks at those people and goes, they deserve equal opportunities as. And so you're gonna see Green uh, petitioning for children, you know, to, uh, they're gonna go, whoa, hold on, hold on. What makes a parent have the right to hit their child? And so you're gonna see uh, Green societies trying to ban uh, spanking children, things like that. Um, because a child is, is, you know, it's just as equal as a parent. And it, it, you know, you wouldn't accept people hitting other people. Why do we accept people hitting small children? It's surely a small child as a person. And so that's gonna be like the sort of mindset of, of green. Um, green is about cooperation and not competition. So at Orange, where Orange sought out some good healthy competition and thrived on trying to beat its competitor and be the best, Green will look at competitors and go, how can we work together? How can we work together to do something better and bigger and more uh, effective, more environmentally effective, more effective in how we spend the money and use our resources? How can we benefit more people? That's a very green mentality. And so you're gonna see business uh, still be a very strong focus at green. Doesn't get rid of uh, a lot of the, the elements of orange that was very uh, entrepreneurial, very business driven, very capitalistic. A lot of that comes through into green, but its, it's underlying values start to shift and change. Um, and so you'll see, if you're into tech, you'll see that this is um, something that's happened to Microsoft in recent years. Microsoft is, is, is transitioning from being an orange company and Microsoft was one of the most ruthless countries, uh, countries uh, companies in the world. Uh, if you look back through, remember in the, the 90s and all the monopoly scandals and all these different things and they were, um, you know, and right through to the 2000s, they were buying out companies left, right and center and they were really very ruthless, very, very ruthless. Bill Gates was a picture of ruthlessness and you look at him now, he's not, at all, right? But Microsoft itself has changed. They've started to create, uh, they're trying to make their software more open source friendly. They're trying to incorporate, um, they're working together with things like Linux, who they were typically terrified of and tried to beat constantly before. They're, they're, so they're, they're not by any means a green company, but they're becoming more green. They're, they're trying to, um, they're, they're less focused on um, turning a buck if it's going to mean it, it disadvantages people, it harms people, that's, that's off the table now. So how do we make a big buck? 
nice orange value, but how do we do it more sustainably, more with other people in mind, more with the globe at heart, with people at heart? You know, that's that's how um, how they're starting to shift, and that's what you're going to see in, in green companies. They're going to be much more um, conscious of of other factors other than just profit margins, and so it's going to be very very hard for companies that are open that have um, uh, you know lots of stockholders. It's going to be very hard for them to become green. Uh, unless their stockholders themselves are green. And often that will be what pushes a company to be green is stockholders driving that. But even then it's, it's gonna be really, really hard. Um, green uh, still values personal development greatly. So uh, while that became a real focus and, and almost the religion of, of Stage Orange, green loves that, but it will bring in a lot of spiritual elements to its personal development. Um, and it will also, generally speaking, be uh, focused on personal development as a group rather than individuals. It will love to do things as groups, as a community. And also when it works as an individual on its personal development, it will be thinking, how, how do I do this or what do I need to develop to be more uh, functional in this group, more functional in society? So you're going to see personal development at Orange won't really care about working on its own personality skills or relational skills, aside from how do I manipulate people? How do I sell to people? How do I make people buy from me? How do I make people like me? That's very orange. But stage uh, green, when it does personal development, its focus is gonna be how do I function better in society? How do I get people to uh, feel loved? How do I become more empathetic? How do I develop compassion in myself? Those are gonna be the kind of mentalities behind green's personal development. So very different from orange, where orange was all about success, and um, green is about success, but for the group. Um, it's not about the individual. It's not as egotistical. It's not as narcissistical. Um, so that's a really interesting shift where you're going to see a lot of personal development, but you're going to see that nuance um, and on the green side. Um, green is all about connecting with its emotions. It, it can still be um, an entrepreneur, but it's going to be more inclusive, more environmental. And it cares what's inside of people. It cares what's going on in people. So um, a green salesperson will do it by connecting with people, by caring what's happening in their lives. Um, it, will, it will give up a sale if it, if it can connect with the person and really help that person more. Now in the long run, that's probably proven to make more sales. So orange might have tapped into that mentality and maybe even do it, but green genuinely doesn't care about the sale. It cares about the person. Um, it's green tends to be anti-war, pro-disarmament, um, anti-guns, uh, a lot of those elements, uh, very pro-choice, uh, very pro-LGBT rights, um, those kind of things uh, will tend to lean very green. So again, very liberal, that, that kind of mindset. Um, now, something that green struggles with is defining its spirituality as well. So you're gonna find green uh, being a group that struggles to define itself, to, to, to put a finger down and go, this is what we're about. This is our spirituality. This is what we believe. If you ask a green, what do you believe? It's gonna be very hesitant to say anything because by saying something, it's writing off something else. By saying, I believe this, by having an absolute, a black, it creates a white and it doesn't like those black and whites. It wants the gray. And so greens are gonna be really hard pressed to define exactly where they're at and what they believe. And that's a pro and that's a big con as well. Um, as we'll see. All right, let's look at some examples of uh, what does this look like? What kind of people uh, or groups or organizations can be uh, green? And so let's rattle through some of these. So environmental groups, very obvious. They care about the world. They're all about the, the, the earth. And so they're gonna be very green. Uh, there's gonna be a green makeup when we look at uh, environmental groups. Gay rights groups, obviously, again, uh, very green feminist movements. Um, Interfaith, uh, really interesting dynamic in uh, Christianity is, is churches that are open to multiple faiths. Well, that's a very green mentality. All spirituality can teach us something, can bring something to the table. We can be open to people of all faiths. And so that's a, a very green uh, perspective. Um, flat churches, so leadership church, leader, leaderless churches um, are very green. Now, again, there's elements of this that can be uh, problematic and, and, and uh, fails to see those holons, those natural hierarchies that develop. Uh, we saw an amazing book by um, a guy called Frank Viola called Pagan Christianity, came out about 10 years ago or so. And he wrote a book explaining all sorts of different elements of why we have leaders and what they're about and how it came about and how it was rooted in pagan, pagan activities and, and a whole bunch of other things as well. But that was one part of it. And what happened is a big movement came out of that um, of uh, house churches and, and home church movement. 
Um, but what's interesting is he wrote a follow-up book a few years later saying, what's well, really interesting that all these house churches started because people didn't want to be led by pastors and have these structures of elders and deacons and priests and all this. And what happened is in the house churches, they're just gravitated, uh, people gravitated towards natural leaders. So we just ended up with the same system, but in a much smaller confined situation. And we found that naturally, some people are just natural born leaders. They, the people uh, look to them to, to tell them, you know, where are we going? What's happening next? Some people are more innovative and creative than other people. Some people are much more passionate about other areas, right? And so we all have our passions and our desires and our giftings and our strengths. And, and Green often fails to see that some of those are um, leadership. Uh, some of those are um, pioneering or in, inspira- inspiring others and, and leading the way. Um, and so something like Flat Churches is an amazing movement, very interesting movement, uh, and I agree with a lot of it. I think it's really good. And, um, and it's, it's often a very big uh, positive development from uh, some very uh, hierarchical and, and structured churches. It really can be. But it fails to see that naturally in time, leaders will start to emerge and evolve uh, in those structures. Uh, multiculturalism, very green principle, humanistic uh, principle, uh, humanistic psychology, things like that. Uh, liberation theology, very, very green, right? We, we, want, we want all people to be free and to be equal. Um, the human potential movement, the new age, very, very green, right? It's very embracing of things, you know, these spiritual elements. But the new age can be interesting. So this is a prime example where um, at green, sometimes green can be very undiscerning and can embrace pre-rational stuff along with the post-rational. It it struggles to define which is which and and to discern which is which. And so the new age is a prime example where sometimes it can be more truly purple depending on what stuff is getting involved in in the new age. So a lot of new age is very is very healthy in its spirituality and it can be very stage green in its spirituality. But, and even later at times, um, a bit like how uh, purple and tribal accidentally tapped into great spiritual realities because it accepted all. Well, again, green accepts all and, and that can be very good as it taps into some healthy stuff. And it maybe is more discerning because it's progressed quite a bit through the, the spiral. Um, but it still embraces all. And so it sometimes brings in some really weird and wacky stuff, right? And so you're going to see at stage green um, some things that are maybe less discerning, maybe not so um, not so much wisdom involved. And so you'll see people um, foregoing, um, you know, the, the forego treatment for cancer um, that has been medically, you know, scientifically proven Um, It isn't biased by, you know, someone that's selling, you know, some sort of drug that's costing a fortune, you know, even countries where it's free, people aren't necessarily making huge big profits off of it and doctors aren't biased. Um, They'll still go to somewhere where you just eat a lot of vitamin C and it's to do with, you know, how much exposure you have to UV light or something where there hasn't been data on it, but it, it feels, well, maybe that's right. Maybe it's more spiritual. There's enough people that say that there's something to it. And so gr- green can open itself up to being very easily manipulated. Um, and I've seen that in a lot of people and I've probably exposed myself to that as well at times. Um, and so green opens itself up to all sorts of things in the name of spirituality, in the name of, well, it's beyond rational. We don't know. Um, and, and, it's, and it's unfortunately at times not as discerning as it could be, as we'll see in later stages. And it often embraces uh, all. And so it brings the baby back, but sometimes it brings a bunch of the bathwater back as well. Um, and so green can be really um, a little bit uh, undiscerning in these areas. Now, that's not to say, you know, if there's other treatments for cancer and stuff, you know, I, I, that's not an area of speciality. It's a, it's a random example, okay? So don't, you know, think I'm poo-pooing anyone that's making decisions that are different or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, don't take medical advice from me, okay? There you go. That's my uh, top tip for the day. Do not take medical advice from Phil Drysdale. Um, but it is an example, you know, it, it could be whatever, you know, it could be people that have um, some cold and, med, cold and flu meds and instead they uh, rub cinnamon on their temples because, you know, they read on some shaman's website that cinnamon can cure colds and flu, you know, whatever. I just made up a treatment, okay? So there, there you go. It's not even a, a real life scenario, but a green might genuinely do that if they came across some shaman that they thought was really spiritual and really had some truth and he said to rub cinnamon on their temples because it will heal colds and flus. Um, And so that's the kind of example where green at times can be not as discerning 
Um, so it's quite an interesting dynamic because it should have, as it transcended, included a lot of that rational thinking, that scientific thinking. But because it recognizes there's more to life than just the rational, um, it's left trying to grasp at that, trying to grab that. But we're not going to see that until much later in the spiral, um, a, a more nuanced and discerning approach to that. And so unfortunately, Green is still left grabbing things that might not be as healthy as uh, true spirituality. Um, yeah, Protestant liberal churches are really interesting, okay? So the, these kind of movements, these Protestant liberal churches, you know, the, um, the emerging church, the, um, the progressive church, these kind of places, um, I, I kind of pigeonholed them into orange a little bit. Now they can be very green, okay? So generally speaking, they, they're orange, sometimes they're even very blue at times. I think we're yet to see whether it's gonna be orange or blue, how they actually work out and develop. I think it depends very largely on how much structure they need. Um, but um, generally speaking, they're formed out of an overly rational uh, overreaction uh, that comes out of blue. So this rational reaction of like, we need a rational uh, church that understands and discerns uh, God and spirituality rationally and scientifically. And so it can be very focused in that way, but actually um, a lot have evolved from that into more of a green embracing, uh, uh, a green place that embraces uh, experience, it embraces community, um, it embraces uh, equality, it embraces global perspective, uh, has interfaith perspectives. And so some of these movements like the Emerging Church and, and the Progressive Church and a lot of these mainline churches as well that have some expressions within them that, that can be quite uh, uh, progressive or, or, or liberal, um, they can start to come out of orange and into green. And so we talked about how in green, um, there was like, uh, in orange, there was kind of like these two dynamics. There was the very overly rational and um, and kind of like uh, almost atheistic, agnostic kind of uh, Christian. But then there was the other kind of Christian that was focused on social justice and, and, and the welfare of all and things like that on the orange spectrum. That spectrum is gonna naturally gravitate into green much quicker because it's already exposing itself to a lot of green principles. Um, and so that's where we start to see things like the Protestant liberal uh, churches uh, being an example of green. Um, where are we? Sorry. Uh, some uh, self-labeled uh, Christian movements uh, that are generally speaking discarded uh, as cults by uh, Christian um, uh, Christians uh, can be quite green. Um, so uh, Christian Science Monitor and things like that can be very green in, in the way that they uh, operate and think. You know, there's the healing energy that's within you that you can send out, that you can heal yourself with your thoughts and your, your mindset. And, um, and, and at this stage at, at Green, we're probably yet to see how much truth there is to some of those uh, principles and elements because there does seem to be some uh, outworking of truth in that. Things like Reiki, um, has been heavily documented to the point where certain, ch uh, certain churches, sorry, certain hospitals around the world are starting to introduce Reiki because it's got so much data on it. And scientists have looked at it and gone, oh, we're not really sure we understand it, but it's, it works. So let's put it in some hospitals and see how it does. Um, and so there's some of these um, scientific uh, green overlaps where, where green seems to be a bit wild and wacky and coming up with these principles and applying these principles of healing energy and crystals and stuff. And then science goes, well, some of this is actually working. We're not really sure how, bit of a mystery. We'll figure it out because we're, we're orange and we're gonna figure out how it works and tick the boxes. Um, but for now, let's do it until we figure it out because it is working. Um, and this is maybe the overlap within science um, uh, between green and orange. And so this is maybe uh, some green scientists looking at things that are maybe, um, they seem quite irrational and going, well, maybe we could try and get some data on this. And even if we don't rationally understand it and can explain it, we can at least create some rational data that we can um, give evidence of why we should at least be using it until we do understand it. Um, this is very interesting. Uh, I mentioned uh, Burning Man can be uh, very green, uh, um, a great example of green. Here's a great example. I read an article a couple of weeks ago of a CEO um, of a, I think it's a payment company. You know, they take Visa, MasterCard and shops basically pay them a percentage to, to do that. Um, and very, very successful company, multi-million uh, company, you know, very, very successful, probably, probably billions actually, there's a payment company, very, very big company. And this CEO was getting paid a CEO salary, you know, million plus a year, very, very successful. And he read an article that said that money can't bring you happiness, but 
up to 70,000, it does increase your happiness. So as you get more money, until you hit 70,000, it will make you happier. And it's because it reduces your stress, it creates uh, less worries and, and anxiety. And so actually because of these surrounding uh, elements, your needs are taken care of. Happiness goes up when your needs are taken care of. It's when you get your wants, that doesn't actually increase your happiness. So up to 70,000, your happiness increases. And then after 70,000, it doesn't make much difference. So he went, my gosh, there's people in my company that get paid less than 70,000 and I get paid like a million. So what he did is he gave himself a pay cut and he, he took a huge cut and he went down to, I think it was 100,000. And then he made sure that every person in his company from janitor right up to the top of the, the, the spectrum was paid at least 70,000. Now, it's not he just gave everyone 70,000. He didn't make it, you know, the communist uh, state here, um, but he made sure that the very least in the company quote unquote, how they perceived least, right? So a janitor or a cleaner, they were paid 70,000. And then everyone was paid um, more than that. You know, uh, you couldn't be paid less than 70,000, but you know, if you were the, I don't know, the COO, maybe you were getting paid, you know, 150,000, I don't know what it was, but you know, so you were paid more for being a harder worker, being more qualified, whatever it was. Um, but he went, no, this is crazy. We should be at least paying people, uh, if that can make them happier and healthier, well, I can afford that we can just have a little bit less profit and and i thought wow that's a profound um approach now you might dislike that especially if you're orange you're going to go wow that's ridiculous you know a true libertarian wouldn't do that you know you know they should work hard for it you know they should shouldn't be a janitor anyway they should go back to school and get qualifications and then maybe they can come back and work for him as a an accountant or as a hr rapper you know uh, i i'm aware that people will have different perspectives on it but what i want you to see is how that is green I want you to see how the green principles come in there where he goes, I don't need as much. I can be more minimalistic. Uh, if, if my happiness isn't going to necessarily go up with more money, well, why don't I just take a little less money and why don't I give it to people whose happiness will go up? I can make dozens of people in my company happier, tangibly happier and feel more secure and safe and feel, and it will affect their relationships with their family uh, positively because they're not so worried and anxious and there's no stress about well, how are we going to pay the bills or whatever. I can do all that. Great, done. That was the CEO's mentality. And so um, I don't remember who it was or what company it was, but uh, I encourage you to Google it. It's a really interesting um, uh, piece. There's a couple of articles that I came across that talked about it. Um, university culture, very, very orange. Okay, so we talked about how going to university can, um, can catalyze people from stage blue into stage orange because it, it, it encourages rational thinking, um, you know, scientific, logical thinking. However, university culture, the culture of students at university, this culture of the teachers and, and that group of people, generally speaking, is quite green. And so you're gonna see a lot of People uh, talking about university students, ah, they're just like, you know, liberal hippies, they'll grow out of it, you know, whatever. And, and that can be true, you know, they, they, they will progress and develop. But very generally speaking at university, there's gonna be a lot of green being instilled in people and developed. Um, different social groups, meetups, things like that can be very green. Um, Antifa, a very green uh, example. So, you know, I don't want to just mention things that can only be seen positively, you know, so um, we talked about how other stages there can be very radical extremist uh, expressions. Well, Antifa is a great example of a radical expression of green. Um, socialists uh, are, are very green, generally speaking. When we talk about socialism in the world today, we're talking about green socialism. We're not talking about blue socialism. Now, when the, uh, when the right uh, leaning con uh, conservative kind of uh, politicians within somewhere like America talk about socialism, they are talking about blue socialism. They are talking about the the negative uh, elements of socialism at those stages that didn't work out, you know, things like Venezuela and uh, China and things like that. Um, they're talking more about communism, you know, that kind of socialism is basically borderline communism. They're not talking about socialism as uh, it exists today. You know, most of the the, the, the quote unquote civilized world, most of the Western world is socialist. Even America is largely quite socialist in a lot of ways um, because socialism isn't the opposite of capitalism. It becomes this kind of blend. Uh, and so you'll see that, um, you know, throughout Europe, UK, Germany, France, you know, uh, Norway, Sweden, these are all very socialist countries, but they're all very capitalistic as well. They're all about, you know, the free markets and, and trying to uh, increase free markets, but also they're all about trying to create um, 
uh, equality and, and, and safety nets for people and different things like that and making sure people have health care. You know, and I think at the end of the day, regardless of where you stand on this spiral, you could be as, uh, you know, as, as far uh, back as somewhere like Red, which is all about me, me, me and very egotistical. At the end of the day, if you said, I'm going to heal this person that's dying, I think you'd be very quick to go, well, yeah, that's a good thing. Um, and so things like healthcare, we can all agree that it's good for people to get healthcare. The, the nuances of how it goes about are the things that we, we tend to argue about. Um, and so green is, is a new, has new ideas, new perspectives on that, that, that often earlier stages conflate with earlier stages of those ideas or earlier principles of those ideas. And so you'll see um, people like, um, a great example would be someone like Jordan Peterson, um, who is, is a very interesting person because he's quite, um, he's very orange in many ways, but he's also quite yellow, uh, very, very advanced uh, along the spiral. Um, but typically, um, his language and the way he talks, um, it, it's, it's so focused on, uh, on anti-green and even a little bit anti-orange. It's got this orange-green overlap that it's really focused on disliking that generally speaking, if you love Jordan Peterson, you're quite unlikely to be uh, in the same place as him. You're more likely to be blue or orange and early orange at that. That's typically, uh, if you're someone that's following Jordan Peterson and absolutely loving his stuff, you're most likely to be somewhere in that window. Now, I watch some Jordan Peterson stuff and, and, and I'm not, and I know other people that do. So don't, again, pigeonhole anything, don't make it black and white. But um, someone like Jordan Peterson is quite fascinating because and the reason I mention him is he'll use phrases like neo-Marxism. Now, neo-Marxism uh, is, is very fair in some sense, right? Because it's not Marxism. It's, it's, it's a new uh, concept of how do we evolve uh, these principles of communism, of socialism, you know, how do we grow and develop? And so, yes, there, there's some new principles of this and growing. But the thing is, it's, it's, in some ways, it's quite uh, unhelpful because he should be uh, self-aware enough to know that his audience is largely blue and green, uh, sorry, blue and orange, and he should know that they are going to demonize anything that's associated with uh, socialism and um, and capitalism of the past. And so just by associating that, he's kind of writing off, he's stopping that group of people being able to entertain and explore those ideas. So he's stopping people being able to go, well, let's look at Norway more rationally and let's look at how they do things. Let's look at how that might be explored. Um, and so you're gonna see um, that while he puts across incredible points and he puts them across really well, really articulately, and he's, he's an amazing mind, unfortunately, the way he presents that to the group that has ended up following him actually causes that group to regress rather than progress um, most of the time, unfortunately, uh, which is very, very unfortunate because we can be growing, but we can be growing within our own stage. We're, 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 we're hunkering in. We can be digging deeper into the stage rather than climbing out. Um, and that tends to be what happens with something like that. And so that's why I mentioned, you know, mentioned um, things like Marxism and socialism. And I thought that's an interesting example is, is someone like Jordan Peterson, who I, I think is a, a fantastic mind. We might talk about him again when we get to yellow um, later on uh, in the series. And um, Whole Foods, Doctors Without Borders, Western Yoga and Buddhism, very good examples of green. If we look at that, something like Western Yoga and Buddhism. So I'm talking not about true yoga or true Buddhism, which can be very, um, very early in the stage, right through to quite late in the stage. There can be some very uh, deep and mystical um, principles behind some of these things. But at stage green, it's generally a westernized, very shallow Buddhism, a very shallow yoga. It's not really diving into the deep spiritual truths of this. It's, it's almost um, a consumerist spirituality. It's almost a surface level spirituality that, that people engage with. Um, Let's go to some examples. You know, people like um, Christian examples might be of green would be someone like Pope Francis, who is actually probably a little bit blue and a little bit green. He, he seems to have kind of, um, he's in certain areas, he's gone through his orange to get to green. Um, but in other areas, he's, he's, not, he's not able to. He's still very institutionalized. He's very uh, black and white. He seems to still be quite rigid against certain things like um, LGBTQ rights and things like that. Um, and so you can see that he's kind of spread across green and blue, but, but very green in a lot of other ways, right? He's very pro environment. He's talking out about, uh, you know, climate change and things like that. Um, you can see he's, he's mentioned, uh, 
uh, all sorts of different uh, progressive ideas. Um, and so in some ways quite green, but in other ways very blue, very interesting uh, mix. Someone like Oprah is very green, right? You'll see her bringing on all these different types of uh, people onto her show. She's got her spirituality shows where she has all sorts of people on. People like Rob Bell, who was on that show, right? Rob Bell is a great example of um, green or catering to green. And so Rob Bell is loved most by people that are orange and green. They love Rob Bell. I actually would probably place Rob Bell as maybe, uh, hey, I don't know Rob Bell, uh, so I, I, of course I can't say, but I would actually say Rob Bell's probably leaning more into yellow than uh, green. Uh, uh, from what I've heard him speak and from, from the podcasts and things I've listened to, and things I, I would say that he's, um, he's actually quite a good percentage yellow. Um, and so very, very uh, insightful person, able to communicate with people at different stages very well and possibly because he's had to. Uh, he's been so uh, forced to interact with people at very different stages. Scandinavia, like I said, a very, very good example of green. And so these um, Scandinavian countries and the way they do things, you know, Scandinavian prisons that are all restoration and re restorative justice focused and things like that. Um, great welfare packages, look after you if you're sick, look after you if you're unemployed, um, you know, care for your kids really well, you know, has like four day schools, four day working, you know, like uh, very, very um, progressive uh, country um, in lots of ways, very, very green. Um, the minimalist movement is very green, of course, very anti-consumerism and capitalism and all about um, how do we have less, how do we make life revolve around less things and more relationships. Um, snowflakes, right? A great example of green. So we have uh, the, the, the slur that is used for a lot of uh, liberal, um, uh, you know, left-leaning people politically um, are generally called snowflakes, right? And that's a great example of uh, green. And so if you're someone that you'd usually look at a group and say, oh, they're the snowflakes, generally speaking, you're talking about stage green. And as we talked about before, this is a huge element in growing and developing is to stop demonizing and labeling uh, groups of people um, at any stage because it will stop you including what you've transcended from and it will stop you transcending into where you need to go because you're demonizing this group so much. Um, so just be very aware of that, be very careful of that. Um, Neo-Darwinism uh, tends to be rejected at this stage. So while Darwinism and evolution um, seems to be embraced at stage orange, there seems to be a leaning into the mystery at this stage. And so people start to question, well, yeah, we agree with the science of, 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 of evolution and there's definitely some evidence of that, but there's so much mystery. Like this is such a chance, it's such a long shot that this would happen. Maybe there is truth to evolution. It, we did evolve from these you know, individual cells, from a big bang, you know, all this kind of process, but maybe there was a steering hand. Maybe there is something, the universe, the divine, God, maybe that is steering this evolution in the right direction. So theories along the lines of quantum evolution, uh, punctu punctuated evolution, emergent evolution, um, those kind of theories uh, lean towards uh, those kind of ideas where evolution is maybe, there's something more going on. Um, very green. Uh, constructivism, you know, the concept that everything that we know, everything that we believe is, is developed within a social construct, within uh, a world that is already feeding us and creating a framework from which we develop truth. And so again, this fourth person mentality of, well, I'm biased, I believe that, but I was told that that's how you read things, how you see things, right? Um, and so it's the, it's the kind of idea of like, well, I know that that, uh, that fruit is red because I know what red is and I can look at that fruit and I can see it. But then you might take a step back and go, well, is that red? Or are you seeing blue and calling it red, right? How do you know? Just because other people point at it and say red, you, the color you see might be the color they see when they see the color blue, um, right? And so there's these, these kind of elements where we start to step back and go, well, actually, a lot of what I know, quote unquote, is socially constructed. It is related to and reliant on my, um, my, in, my the input that has happened around me, this interpersonality uh, connection. Um, progressive churches and emergent church, like I said, very green. Um, although the emergent church, I do think is um, still kind of dragging its heels a little bit. It's still very uh, blue, orange. Um, it still needs that structure. It still needs a lot of that um, formality. The, the, it has a lot of black and white in it as well. Um, but progressive churches can be quite black and white at times as well. Uh, the New Thought movement, 
um, the spiritual but not religious movement, right? This is, how many people do you hear say that? Well, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Now, those types of people can be very orange, um, but generally speaking, they're starting to lean towards green. Um, and if, if they are orange, they're maybe more borrowing the language of someone that's green and applying it to their situation. But, but that, that whole movement started around people that um, were embracing things like new age and things like that. And they were going, well, I'm spiritual. I believe in a God. I believe in a divine, but I'm not religious. I don't really go for church or for, you know, all these like the Bible and the Quran. That's just not where I'm at. Um, and so that's a, a great example of green. Um, the, you know, pantheism, panentheism, karma, reincarnation, those are very green principles. As green starts to grab all kinds of spiritual ideas, these ideas are very, very um, attractive to stage green. Mostly, um, stage green uh, Christians are going to be born out of uh, traditional Christians seeking some form of spiritual experience. They're gonna be born out of um, either stage blue that hasn't um, seen uh, maybe charismatic Pentecostal kind of um, experience. Those That stage is gonna be seeking that and not go to uh, charismatic and Pentecostal churches, which is generally speaking the path they'll take because it's, it's staying in their own stage. But at times they might pursue uh, some form of spiritual divine encounter outside of its stage blue and, and it will be pushed towards stage green. It's gonna go through that crisis of orange and all that uh, that questioning and all sorts of different stuff on its way, but it will be pushed towards green because of that. And also stage green is often found because state, people at stage blue, uh, charismatic and Pentecostal have gone through a lot of this deconstruction at stage orange, but they can't let go of the spirituality that they had at stage blue. They're gonna know about that. I saw that person get healed or I had that profound encounter with God and that's gonna pull them into green as they, they seek out um, spiritual encounters again. It's also gonna um, be found by people that at earlier stages um, may have had some form of experience with psychedelics. I mentioned that at stage orange as maybe being something that might cause transformation. Now, generally speaking, at stage orange, it's really gonna struggle to put, uh, understand uh, spiritual altered states and things like that. But people at earlier stages that have had spiritual altered states through something like psychedelics, or maybe through a dream or a vision or a trance with God, and um, whatever that looks like, generally speaking, that can push people into stage orange. So even though they're being rational at stage orange, uh, stage green, sorry, even though they're being rational at stage orange, that knowledge of, well, I had that altered state, I had that encounter when I took LSD or mushrooms, or I had that um, encounter when I was in church one time and God showed up and spoke to me. I can't let go of that stuff. And so it's gonna push them. It's gonna push them into um, stage green. Uh, stage green uh, generally includes, like we said, a lot of purple uh, accidentally. So it reintroduces a lot of things like magic and fairy tales and psychic phenomena and ghosts and things like that. Now, some of those things may be authentically spiritual uh, as well, but generally speaking, uh, a lot of them you know, have been disproven or, or appear to be disproven on some level. And, and so they're, they're maybe reintroducing pre-rational uh, spirituality. Um, generally speaking, someone at stage green isn't gonna start worshiping the sun god and, and fearing the moon god, for example, because that rationality is so established but they may start to uh, explore certain elements that are a bit more gray, a bit less uh, certain. And um, what am I saying, sorry. Um, Sage Green is gonna generally speaking be more uh, focused on the first person God, so the God within. The second person God, this God that uh, Stage Orange struggled with, the man in the sky or the guy that you talk to or the person that you interact with, Sage Green is gonna struggle with that person. Um, and it's gonna struggle uh, a little bit with the God that is everywhere in all places, but it's gonna be open to that and it's gonna engage with that to some degree. But the, the, the primary God at stage green is gonna be this God within still. Um, uh, much like the stage orange was very focused on that. Um, so stage green is probably mostly that and then it opens up to this third person that orange was less open to of God within all things and around all things and working through all things and he's in other people as well as in me. And um, so stage green's gonna start opening up to, to that. 
Um, stage green as well can get a little bit um, a little bit red at times. It can be very focused on prosperity and favor and things like that when it gets a bit into that self-help stuff and things like that. Uh, so it can still bring someone out. So even though we've been through blue, orange, and now into green, we're still bringing some reds that, that were still rampant in orange, that, that favor, that prosperity, that me, 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 can still come into green. So don't think just because if you're feeling like, oh yeah, I'm really green, don't feel you're, you're immune to um, to any of these kind of uh, elements of um, excuse me of, of of being a bit narcissistic at times. You you still can have plenty of narcissism at stage green. All right, let's look at some Christian effects. Okay, so let's look at the Bible. Excuse me, I'm just gonna take a drink. Okay, so let's look at the Bible. How does stage green see the Bible? Well, generally speaking, stage green are going to feel that they're beyond the Bible. Oh, the Bible, that's like a prehistoric text. We're kind of beyond that. We're connecting with the Spirit uh, personally and in and, 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 and a real tangible way. Like, we don't need some cold, hard, ancient text. Um, they may still rely on the Bible quite heavily if, if we're looking at churches that, um, that are at stage green. Um, but generally speaking, churches at stage green are going to focus predominantly excuse me, on the canical, don uh, canical gospels. You know, they're gonna focus on Jesus and the words of Jesus. Um, they're gonna um, focus on the fact that Jesus is this postmodern thinker, you know, as they read it. Um, so they're, you know, at each stage, Jesus will be whoever they want him to be, right? So even at stage warrior, Jesus is running around killing people, you know? So we can all see Jesus at different stages, but at this stage, they're gonna focus on that part of the Bible of Jesus because they can see Jesus and interpret Jesus as this postmodern, uh, thinker who's feminist, who's for all equality, and uh, uh, he's, he's all about equality and, and, and uh, equality that's it's religious equality, social and economic uh, equality, uh, political uh, equality. You know, he's, he's not um, hierarchical. That's how they perceive Jesus, and that's, that's what they, that they uh, focus on when they open the Bible. A great person to look at when you are wondering, well, what does green look like um, when it approaches the Bible is someone like Marcus Borg. Um, he's a, a fantastic example of this. Um, the Bible to someone at green uh, is much like orange. It is true without being literal and factually true. Okay, so um, orange uh, Christians would open the Bible and go, well, yeah, there's so much truth in here, but that doesn't mean it actually happened that way. And so they'll look at the floods and go, wow, what incredible truths in here. But I don't actually believe there was an ark that had every single animal on it. Um, you know, so that's kind of where green and orange are going to be at. They're going to look at, they're going to open up the, the, the creation stories in Genesis and read it and they go, wow, look at these truths that God loves us, that he cares for us, that he created this whole planet so that we could look after it and, and enjoy it and experience uh, love with one another and with him. That's beautiful truth. But I don't actually think it happened in six days, exactly 10,000 years ago or whatever, you know? So they're gonna, they're gonna see truth, but it's not gonna have to be fact. That's a very important distinction, which is quite interesting because this is actually quite an ancient way of reading the text as well. So even at the earlier stages, um, you know, the Jews read their texts quite like this at times. They didn't necessarily need facts to communicate truth. And we all know this to certain degrees, right? No one, um, no one reads uh, Romeo and Juliet and goes, this isn't true. You know, the, of course, love and passion and death and tragedy, these are all true principles that we can learn from and we know of and we can experience and we can feel, but it didn't actually happen. It wasn't an actual Romeo and Juliet, right? And so we, we understand that combination of truth and fact and how they often don't need to overlap. Um, and so that's very key to how Green reads the Bible. Green reads the Bible and it sees it as a combination of history um, and non-literal linguistic art, generally referred to as a metaphor, okay? So metaphorical um, meaning within the Bible is very important to Green and that's how it sees a lot of the Bible, a huge portion of the Bible is, is well, where's the metaphorical truth? Where's the, the truth that is, it's not literal, but what's it actually saying to me today? Uh, what does it mean? And uh, also, Green will see uh, the Bible as just one of the many uh, 
spiritual wisdom texts. And so uh, green will value the Bible and appreciate the Bible, but it will also value and appreciate the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita or, um, you know, different texts uh, uh, from different traditions will have great value to someone at green because they can find truth in all uh, traditions. Okay, so it's really interesting dynamic of how green starts to see the Bible, explore the Bible and um, and explore other texts as well. Um, so how does green see God? Well, green sees God as um, a being that can be related to, that brings transformation, that, that transforms people. That, that, that's one of the main focuses of it is, is for love and for connection and for relationship because green is very touchy-feely, relational driven, but it's all about transformation and changing the world, changing itself. And that's what it believes connecting with God does. Um, Marcus Borg, who I mentioned earlier, a great example of green. Um, he, he makes three assertions of God. So he says that God is real. So, so greens believe in a God, um, generally speaking. Uh, God can be related to as is modeled by Jesus, for example. So you look at Jesus praying to his father and connecting with his father, um, uh, seeing the father in, uh, seeing, seeing God in people and the kingdom within people. So we can understand that, that through Jesus, we can see what well, God can be connected to and related to. And so we know that we can do that. Um, and generally speaking, the relationship to God will change and transform your life. And so those are the three principles that Marcus Borg makes about God. Um, we, you can say what you like about um, I'm just kind of giving you the, the, the kind of perspective that he has. Generally speaking, green is going to be a bit panentheistic, a bit like what I said orange uh, was like. So a Christian that is green is going to see God um, in all things. And so he's in all people, he's in all animals and rocks and, and, and hedges and everything. He might be in people to a special degree in a special way. Uh, the, the, the spirit of Christ embodying uh, us in a, in a unique and, and, and individual way. But God is in everything. But it's not pan, pantheistic where God is everything. It's that God is within everything, but God is also out with of everything as well. So he's the whole universe is in God. Um, i.e. God is bigger than it, but God is also in all the universe. He saturates it all. Um, and so that's a very green uh, kind of concept. Uh, a great example of that might be um, uh, Richard Rohr, a great example of, of how that might work. We'll talk about that in, a, in the next uh, bit where we talk about Jesus and Christ. Um, but God is not a, a supernatural being that's up in somewhere else, heavens beyond the universe, you know, and he comes into this world every now and again to encounter us. No, God is here and he's now. That's how uh, greens would see uh, God. Um, so that began at stage orange, but we're going to see it develop in stage green and we're going to see it go into stage yellow even um, as it evolves and grows and, 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 and flourishes. Um, so Jesus, how does stage green see Jesus? Well, this is really interesting because Jesus is the main anchor point for the Bible for stage green. So if stage green wants to keep their Bible, they, they focus a lot on Jesus and on Jesus's words because he's their kind of picture of green within the Bible. But there's a very divided opinion of Jesus at stage green. There's, there's a lot of um, contention and, and issues um, because the thing is Jesus can seem really exclusive, right? He's exclusive of other faiths and paths and um, and so often people avoid Jesus because he can seem exclusive. Now, there's, of course, ways to read that inclusively. But if that's not come about and that's not uh, looked at, um, people can be quite nervous and worried about Jesus and, and, and create a bit of distance because Jesus is so exclusive. And that's not a very green principle. Um, so some talk about him more as a peer of people like Buddha and Krishna. Right. So he he's like a uh, picture of God. He's a enlightened being. He's a uh, supernatural, uh, divine, enlightened human, um, but he's just a one of those. He's not the enlightened human. You know, he's not the uh, divine human. He's not God in the flesh. He's like ah, he's a human that is full of God, like Buddha was or like Krishna would have been. Um, and so, just one of many peers is often how uh, Greens might engage with Jesus. Um, some actually just refuse to talk to him at all. I've been around some Christians that are at stage green that just kind of ignore Jesus. It's, it's just too much of a complex issue. Maybe they've got too much baggage uh, around the topic. Um, and so they, they struggle with. But most people generally will still embrace and center around Jesus. Um, generally speaking, at stage green. Now, some people at stage green, uh, in fact, a lot of people at stage green are still... 
um, likely to struggle with the concept that Jesus was divinely conceived and divine from birth. Um, they may lean more towards a concept of Jesus grew up to realize his divinity and he manifested his divinity. He woke to his divinity. Um, a great uh, tenant within Green at times is a separation of Jesus and Christ. And so we've mentioned this as we've gone through the series. This is the first time where um, where we see Jesus and Christ being separated because Jesus wasn't, you know, his name wasn't Jesus H. Christ, you know, son of Mary and Joseph Christ. Um, you know, Jesus' name would have been Jesus bar Joseph, you know, you know, Jesus son of Joseph, that would have been his name. Um, but Jesus Christ, Christ means the anointing, the soaked uh, presence of God, just marinating uh, something. Um, and so it means that God's presence poured out upon the oil, the, 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 the anointing poured out upon something. Um, and so when it says Jesus Christ, it means Jesus full of God, soaked up, you know, like all of God. Um, and so people highlight at times, so a great example of this might be Richard Rohr, who, who wrote The Universal Christ. It's a fantastic book exploring this concept is the Christ, Christ is the spirit of God um, that inhabits all the earth, all things, all people, but inhabited Jesus in a way that Jesus woke up to it. Jesus was the first person to be fully aware of his divinity, fully aware of God, fully being within him, fully aware of the connection he could have to Papa God, to Father God. Um, and so that might be a very green way of approaching uh, this topic, and it may well uh, continue actually into some later stages, but um, that's a very green principle, this concept of, of Christ's consciousness, right? So we awaken to an awareness and a, a state of being full of God. Um, and so Jesus is a historical person full of Christ, uh, the, the, the spirit of God. Um, so what Jesus had is something that we can have today. That's a very uh, green concept. Uh, relationship with Jesus is less common at this stage, but still common enough. And so because of the split from Jesus and Christ, um, some people struggle to connect with Jesus in a way that he can be related to, worshipped, prayed to, uh, but they connect to the, the, the spirit of Christ, this, 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 um, this uh, spirit of God that is in all and with all and, and, and above all. Um, that's generally how people at Stage Green are going to uh, connect, but they may well still connect with Jesus um, to some degree. Um, Jesus at this stage becomes really inclusive and accepting um, through, like when compared to prior stages, he's a personification of love and peace. Um, and some people will say, well, that's, that's right, good. And other people will go, well, no, he's not. He's, he's still exclusive and he's still got wrath. And so depending on where you're at in your stage, we'll just, we'll, show how you can read these texts differently. Um, but at this stage, that's how Jesus is going to be revealed, very inclusive and accepting and loving and peace-filled. Um, him and his teachings are generally radically subversive and political, um, uh, much like the Old Testament prophets. You know, he, he undermines uh, the inequality. He undermines the nationality. He undermines the exclusivity. He, he's trying to establish inclusivity and establish love and kindness and oneness um, and so uh, that's a huge part of, of who Jesus is. For many people at Stage Green, Jesus is no longer the only way to see and know God though. That's the vast majority of Stage Green will see Jesus as a way to God or they might see that, that Christ is the only way to God but Christ is in all. It just requires an awakening to that reality um, and so the, the concept that you have to believe in Jesus, pray to Jesus, ask Jesus into your heart, that has, has long gone at this stage. Uh, we probably lost that a couple of stages back at, uh, well, we lost it at Orange, you know, so it's, it's, it's not there anymore at, at stage green. So how does prayer and worship work? Well, prayer and worship, generally speaking, can be done in any way, any one once. So whatever works for you is good because it's this anything goes, very gray, no absolute truth stage, uh, very relativistic. Um, prayer and worship is gonna look like anything, but at the same time, it's gonna be very problematic because um, stage green really struggles with this person God that is worshiped and connected to, or the person Jesus that we worship and connect to. And so it's gonna struggle to pray for things, to worship, to, to do those things. So generally speaking, 
Uh, prayer and worship is going to look very similar to orange, maybe a bit more um, spiritual now that it's starting to open up to spirituality. So it's going to still have a lot of meditation, contemplation, mindfulness, reflection. Um, one thing we'll see up here again at this stage is stage green is going to start to be open again to pray for healing. But it's not going to be, oh God, please heal Bob. It's going to be I release healing to you, Bob, because there's an like understanding that God is within me, that I can channel healing energy and, and things like that are gonna be much more common. So you're gonna have that kind of Reiki, um, that, that charismatic concept that's very much like God in me releasing healing, you know, things like um, people like um, the charismatic movement like Bethel and things like that are, are very into uh, us being divine encounters to other people. We, we are the hands and feet of God. We bring the kingdom of God. We bring healing. That kind of concept starts to come back in at stage green, this uh, this uh, fullness of God residing in us, being channeled and being uh, poured out upon other people. So you'll see healing prayer and, and things like that um, maybe start to reemerge at stage green for some people, not always. Um, worshiping uh, a specific being that is God's, you know, this God's that we can worship is still really tricky though. And so worship and prayer um, in traditional senses can be really challenging at stage green. Um, how about sin and salvation? So the word sin at this point is just not really used. And so we saw at stage orange, we started to let go of the word uh, sin. But at this stage, stage green, the word sin is just really disliked. Now, it's not to say that it doesn't believe that there's any wrong actions. You know, it still would say rape and murder is bad and wrong, but it's just generally speaking, trying to dissociate from the word sin. There's too much religious baggage around it. It's too... Uh, it's too caught up in all sorts of connotations that stage green generally wants to leave it behind to let go. Um, sin, however, the, 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 this bad stuff, generally speaking, if it's, if it's thought of, it's thought of uh, on a personal level and a, and a systematic level. So on the personal level, um, we talked about before, it's anything that we do to, um, that, that disobeys God in, in some of the earlier stages, you know, purple, red, blue was disobeying God. At orange, it became much more um, something that harms us or ourselves. What well, green, it becomes us not living up to our full potential us not living up to our full potential and, and us impacting negatively other people living up to their full potential. We're harming other people and, and causing them not to live to their full potential. So that's that's how it works at a, a personal level. So it's very, um, it's still very moral. It's still very um, focused on us doing what's right, us being the best ourselves so that we can be, us not harming ourselves, us not harming others, us helping others be the best person they can be. So it's still driven by that, but it's got a lot less a connotation of a God who's got a will that he's telling you what's right and what's wrong. Um, and it's much more focused on individuals. Um, at a systematic level, uh, it really focuses on a domination systems, systems that oppress other people. That is sin to stage green. So it looks at how do we dismantle these systems of oppression, these powers and principalities that oppress other people, that cause inequality, that harm people, um, that put some people above other people and benefit some people at the expense of other people. These are sinful, uh, oppressive systems that need to be uh, dismantled at this level. Um, because Green doesn't believe that they have the only truth or path uh, uh, to God's salvation, um, generally is something that all can experience in any faith or without faith. And generally speaking, um, salvation might not even be something that is necessary at stage green. It might not be something that they particularly think of. Um, so the concept of salvation, how do you get sal saved, um, is generally speaking quite often nothing, uh, something that just stage green aren't going to talk about. They don't think about it. It's just not how they, they operate and how their worldview works. They don't have that paradigm anymore. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just not where, where they're at, you know, uh, where at stage orange, uh, other religions were tolerated, stage green, other religions are embraced. And so we, we, stage green will start to look at and go, oh, wow, yeah, Islam, well, we love Islam. We love the, that they can be loving and kind and how much they look after the poor and, you know, and oh, yeah, wow, Hinduism, that's so beautiful, the way they do this and that. And oh, isn't it wonderful that Buddhism does that? And, and, and it starts to go, well, yeah, surely they'll all be with God. They all are working with God and working through God. With, uh, God's working through them and they're engaging with God in different ways through different names and they'll ultimately be with God. Um, and so generally speaking, all are included in God's love at stage green. And nobody will tend to, uh, generally speaking, green, no one will think of anyone spending uh, eternity apart from God. 
And so let's look at heaven and hell in that context. Heaven um, often gets rebranded and renamed at, at Green. Green is big into rebranding and renaming because it dislikes um, a lot of its past Christian self, but it also doesn't want to um, seem elitist. It doesn't want to put its Christian self above uh, the Buddhist self or the, the, the Islamic self or the atheist self, you know, that is valid and you are valid and you have truth as well. You know, it's a very green mentality. Um, so heaven often gets renamed to things like nirvana, spiritual enlightenment, eternal peace, uh, internal peace. Um, death remains a mystery though. It still remains something that we don't know. We, we're not sure about, um, where orange might get very rational and, and scientific, where we, we, yeah, we can't know, but we do know that we become worm food, or it might be very atheistic and, and very nihilistic. Um, green opens back up again and goes, well, we don't know, it's just a mystery, isn't it? Who knows? Maybe it's the spiritual enlightenment of going to nirvana and being one, or who knows? We don't know. Um, the, excuse me, the concept of resurrection um, is often replaced with some sort of concept of reincarnation or becoming one with, with the consciousness, with the, excuse me, with the universe. That's a very green ideology as well. So uh, letting go of the idea of my individual self, because it's so focused on the community, on the global, on others, on, on we, the, the, the body of humanity, um, I think that, that bleeds into some of our spirituality where we, we focus less on me being uh, resurrected as an individual, but actually me being uh, ascending and, 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 and transcending into the collective us, uh, this consciousness. That can be a very green uh, mentality. Um, the self, the, the authentic self, the true self, this deep uh, spiritual being that is deeper than than just the, the body or the mind, um, as, as Green might see it. Um, that self is eternal uh, and it, it continues to emerge from within our, our ego and it continues to emerge from within other egos. So people might say that this authentic self, this being that is the true being at the heartbeat of us is also at the heartbeat of all. Um, and so that's very, um, think of the, the story The Egg by the, the author of The Martian, I forgot his name now. But if you go to YouTube and you watch uh, The Egg, it's a, it's a fascinating philosophical inquiry of what it might be that, that consciousness is or whatever. But basically uh, the premise is that, um, that we all live every life that has ever been lived and that we are one being that is living every single life and that this is just a, a training ground for us to grow and develop and, and attain uh, a greater consciousness and we don't necessarily remember every life but at the end what when we when we finish all the lives we will become uh, this transcendent being that remembers all lives remembers all that it learned from every experience and is this hugely well-rounded person that will go on beyond this universe into something deeper and bigger and greater now that's something that greens will lap up that kind of idea and and philosophically it's, it's a fascinating idea to play with and to entertain um uh, and so, uh, yeah, Greens love stuff like that. And so that's maybe a, a picture of what maybe the afterlife might look like to someone at Green. Um, hell becomes much more of a real reality now, much like an orange. Hell isn't this afterlife punishment or anything like that because the notion of that is just totally removed. It's kind of disconnected because it was already removed at orange. But at stage Green, hell it continues to be a psychological condition of disconnection, of alienation. It's, it's being disconnected from other people. It's being disconnected from the divine, from God. Um, it's believing that we are apart from God and other people. So it's this, this disconnect. Uh, that's what it is to go through hell. It's to suffer the consequences of our uh, quote unquote sins, right? Those, those things that, um, that hold us back from being our true self, that hold others back from being their true selves. That, that's, that's hell, that's living in hell and that's other people living in hell. Now the kingdom of heaven is, is um, a concept that that's continues to grow and develop as we go through these stages. At this stage, the kingdom of heaven, um, it, it's, it's like orange, it's about doing good in this earth. It's about bringing um, the reality of, of, of true reality, of good, of peace, of love, of grace. It's about bringing that reality to now. You know, earth, um, people, uh, it's not that, uh, what's a good way to put it? Um, it's not saved for later. You know, we're not supposed to live miserable in this life and then go to a perfect paradise and it's be fine. No, it's about being a wonderful, perfect place today. How do we make that come about? How do we bring that? Um, that's a huge principle at Stage Green is how do we, uh, we don't need to be saved, but the world does. How do we save the world? How do we bring 
goodness and love and mercy and kindness and grace and compassion and empathy into this world. That's a very, very green mentality. Uh, we release the kingdom of God on earth. Now, what's an interesting dynamic though is well, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven becomes a phrase that green starts to want to disconnect with a little bit because uh, the kingdom, kingdom is very like patriarchal, it's very hierarchical, um, so it doesn't like that concept. So it's going to talk about things like the reality of of of, uh, of the universe. It's going to talk about just love and and uh, and bringing the the conscious reality of love and uh, and the the. Um, I'm trying to think of some phrases. Stuff they're all gone out of my head. But you know what I mean. It's it's gonna it's gonna look at things that it, green is really about rebranding here. Uh, you know, it'll really want to lose a lot of its Christian language, a lot of its Jewish language. Certainly, anything that's patriarchal that can be sexist, it can uh, speak uh, poorly of any uh, minority or anything like that. That is something that green despises. So it's gonna rebrand in a lot of ways here. Um, it's the kingdom of heaven to green is living in the reality that we are all spiritual beings on a human journey together now, right now. And that can be as beautiful and as wonderful as we allow one another to make it. So the mystical is an interesting state here because this is where we see the mystical start to come back. So we talked about the bell curve. It starts up really high at purple, comes down in red and then blue, and then it bottoms out at orange. And at green, it starts to build up again. So at green, we start to see um, the introduction of the mystical. And we talked about that. Um, so where orange rejected the supernatural and attributed even Jesus' miracles to the mythic at times, um, green starts to open back up to the supernatural uh, and it thrives on supernatural experiences and it seeks supernatural experiences. It's something that it actively seeks out as a supernatural and mythical, uh, uh, mystical uh, experiences and truth. Uh, uh, someone at stage uh, green desires encounters with God and experiences with God and altered states and trances and visions and dreams. Um, someone at stage green may take uh, psychedelics, you know, people, things like LSD or magic mushrooms, psilocybin, to, to try and um, create and, and create a, a, a foundation for that experience, that encounter with the, the, the spiritual realm. Um, very, very green in, engagement with the, with the mystical. Um, however, like I said, it often struggles to distinguish between pre-rational magic and post-rational mystical. Um, so it can at times glorify the old days of purple. So remember when we were talking about purple and I was talking about how some people almost like romanticize it and they go, oh, if we only we could go back to living in these tribal uh, units, it would be so perfect. Well, stage green does that very much about uh, stage purple. It'll look at like, oh, you know, look how they, they hunt and they thank the animal for its offering when they, they take it and they make sure none of the animals wasted. That's beautiful. And, um, but they also then go, oh, and look how the shaman gave people voodoo dolls and that was how they, uh, you know, they controlled. And they go, oh, that's an interesting principle. Right now, voodoo doll is probably a bad example because someone at stage green is going to value other people too much to use something like voodoo dolls. But, um, but it, will, it will go into all sorts of magic um, believing that it can be a true spiritual encounter. And so uh, a lot of things, and remember when I say magic, what I mean by magic is something that is understandable uh, by rational logic that we don't yet understand and therefore mystify. Whereas the mystical is something that is beyond our understanding, beyond rational thought potentially uh, forever, but certainly for now. Um, and so whilst at stage purple, it probably was quite mystical because they didn't understand it. Now we understand it's quite magical. It's, it's, it's just a, an arbitrary like uh, spirit assigned to a very real reality, right? So it's the, gods, the sun god and the moon god. Well, those are very real realities of the moon spinning around the earth, the earth spinning around the sun. We know how that works. So it's not really a, a magical being or a mystical being or a spiritual being. It's just it's just the, the universe operating as it does with gravity. Um, so we need to be careful at this stage uh, green because we, we will see a lot of pre-rational spirituality as well as post-rational spirituality. So that's good that we're starting to engage with some um, fresh uh, and, and, and new spiritual uh, elements and, and insights and encounters. But, but we need to be wary that we uh, are transcending and including what is good, but allowing what isn't healthy and what isn't true to, to be left behind. Um, so it reintroduces the good, but it also brings in some of the bad in many ways. 
So let's look at some pros and cons of uh, this stage. The pros, so like I said, the fourth person perspective is a huge pro at this stage because suddenly we are observing the observer, right? And so you've heard this kind of saying when we talk about meditation, for example, you, you have a thought and then you think, is that a good thought, is that a bad thought? Well, who's having that thought, right? Who's judging the judge? Who's, who's observing the observer? Um, it's the person that goes, hmm, I know I'm observing this to be true, but is it true? what's my bias and it's taking us another step back right it's observing the observer um, and that allows it to look on certain things that at stage orange can be black and white and adds a bit more nuance and complexity to it and, and maybe question certain things that need to be questioned um, and so like we, we mentioned the example of bringing in um, some critical thought on some scientific conclusions based on well actually is that scientist fully unbiased no okay, what are their biases? Like, you know, when I'm doing some science, what is my bias? You know, thinking uh, through things like that can be very, a very healthy element of, of stage green is that fourth person perspective. Um, it's very healthy to look beyond absolutism um, when dealing with a lot of truths. Um, so many things that are quote unquote true and absolute aren't. We, we discover as we go on, oh, that isn't how it works, okay. Well, what is going on? And so it's really healthy for us to look at absolutes and, and maybe hold them a bit looser, maybe not have as much absolutes. So that's a very healthy element that's brought in at, at this stage. Um, we are, uh, at this stage, we're very uh, sensitive to oppression and inequality, and that's really great, right? That's fantastic. That brought about the civil rights movement. It brought about, um, you know, women being able to vote. It brought about abolition, abolition of slavery and um, and, and all sorts of amazing things. It's, it's been great in creating equality for uh, people of different races, genders, sexualities, uh, religions, um, you know, disabilities. This is a really, really good uh, aspect of being very sensitive to inequality and, and oppression. In oppression. In inequality and oppression. Um, so that's really, really great. Um, it opens people back up to spirituality, even if it's at a shallow understanding, even if it doesn't manage to discern what's right and what's wrong and it brings in it all, it's starting to open up to spirituality and that's a very good thing. It's a very healthy and, and helpful thing as we continue to grow and develop. Um, there's a larger focus on uh, personal development from a more healthy perspective than at Stage Orange. So like I said, well, Stage Orange was very selfish in its personal development. It was all about uh, itself. It was all about how it could get ahead, how it, if it was about how to relate to other people, it was very much in a manipulative way. So how can I relate to people for my benefit? Whereas Stage Green starts to look at personal development and go, well, how can I better myself so that people around me feel more loved, so people around me are better off so that I'm not harming other people as much. That, that kind of uh, reality. And then of course there's selfishness still in there. Um, there's, there's ego work the whole way in, in this, in this uh, program, unfortunately. Um, but it be does become a lot more healthy. Um, it, it explores the inner self as well. So in this spirituality, in this personal development, it starts to be critical of itself. It starts to look at itself and go, well, what's going on in me? How, how do I um, heal my hurts? How do I grow? How do I develop? That's very green work and that's really healthy work. Um, you know, it's something like earlier, like stage red, we'd blame a demon and just pray away the demon and then think it's fixed. But really, sometimes we require some real inner work to, to fix this. Um, there's great creativity at stage green because it's a lot more gray, because it values people and individuals. It, it creates a lot more individuality and, and creativity than you'll see at earlier stages. Um, and so actually there can be real um, booms to certain things. So earlier stages like science and, and capitalism and, and business and entrepreneurship, those are really great. Um, but actually sometimes they can be stifled in their creativity. And actually it's when we see stage green open up, there's a whole boom of creativity because it's open to other perspectives, other ideas, different people groups. Creativity can explode. A multicultural business is always going to have more perspective than an individual singular uh, cultural business, right? And so of course that's going to uh, do better. So actually, you know, you look at um, a very capitalistic driven uh, business owner um, would do well to have a very green culture in his business because he'll sell to multicultures uh, by having uh, multicultural products or multicultural services. 
And so this is kind of actually sometimes how you can almost start luring orange into green is by uh, propositioning that they'll make more money out of being a more well-rounded person, caring about the environment, caring about people. You know, you see people that are drilling for oil starting to care more about the environment, not because they care about the environment, but because they're realizing, oh, there's maybe more money to be made out of, uh, um, out of green uh, sustainable uh, energy solutions, you know? And so uh, this is sometimes how people start on that path. And ultimately, any process, uh, any anything that gets us moving along in the right direction can be a good thing. It, not necessarily always a healthy thing uh, for, for that specific time, but on the in the long run, it'll, it'll keep moving us forward and that can be a good thing. Um, of course, there's a strong community focus, and that's beautiful. It can be incredible for local communities, for churches, for uh, nations to be more green is a really wonderful thing. Um, there's more care for the earth, which is hugely important, uh, really, really important that we are all more aware of, of how we look after the world we're on and how we ensure that it looks after us. Uh, and, and so that's a, a huge element at Stage Green and, and, and maybe one of the more pressing issues uh, of um, facing the reality that the majority of the world isn't here yet. You know, if you look at stage green being only five, 10 percent, if you look at um, uh, yellow being maybe one percent, uh, that gives you a lot of percent that aren't here. Now, stage orange, because it's rational and scientific, a huge portion of stage orange is uh, in the camp that is caring about environment and caring about the world very, very selfishly, very much in a, I want, I want to survive, I want to live. Uh, I don't want to be breathing through a, a mask through smog or, you know, I don't want the sea levels to swallow up my house that's on the coast. Um, but it's still there. And so it's not that the entire world doesn't care, but it's, it's definitely the, a large minority when we look at the whole population of the earth. Um, and so that could be a real factor. And so that's a very good thing about green is that it does care about these things. Um, compassion and generosity are huge values at this stage and those are beautiful, wonderful things. No one's going to say those are not good things to be generous and compassionate to your fellow human. Um, creating altered states of consciousness are very possible at this stage, right? People are so open, so um, wide open. We talked about this in purple. People are so wide open that God can speak to them and they can have very real encounters. This is very possible at stage green because they become so open. So you talked about people doing psychedelics, but that's, that's a very uh, tangible, forced way to try and create a, an altered state. But even dreams and visions and trances, something that someone at stage blue or maybe stage orange, for almost certainly stage orange, they, they won't be as open to having a dream or a trance or anything like that. But at stage green, they're very open to that. They're looking for it. They're going to keep a dream diary and see how the, the universe is speaking to it through its dreams and things like that. That's a very green way of uh, operating. And, and being more open to an altered state is a great thing because it can move you forward. It can help you connect with the divine, with God. Um, that's a really good thing. Um, and moderate constructivism, that, that concept that we, we are a bit of a product of our environment, a product of the society, and that who we are is developed and how we think is developed, how we know is developed by our social uh, construction. Um, that's, that's really helpful. It helps us be aware of our inherent biases and it helps us grow quicker um, and be more open to criticism as well. So there's a lot of really good pros to Stage Green. Um, all right, let me get a quick drink. <laughs> Hope you're surviving, doing well. Uh, I'm getting a bit parched. All right, so let's look at the cons, okay? So we've been through um, some of the pros. Now, I'm gonna give you a lot of um, negative elements to this. I don't, wanna, I don't want to fixate on this, okay? Um, because if you're at an earlier stage, it's gonna be really easy to fixate on this and then cause you not to move into green, okay? So you wanna be focusing on the pros. You wanna focus on how that brings benefits to where you're at if you're at orange or earlier stages, okay? But if you're at stage green, and, and many of you are gonna be there, at least partially, you're gonna to need to be aware of these comments because you're gonna hit these negative elements and you're gonna to need to hit them and, and, and come to the, the conclusion of them so that you can transcend, right? So that you can move into yellow. Um, so let's look at some green, okay? So green is overly idealistic, okay? So uh, it, it's all about peace and love and it's, it's you know all about the hippie, liberalism, all that kind of mindset. But the problem is green, um, we talked about it in an earlier stage, green went into, um, couple of green people that were all about peace and love decided to get some hug, free hug signs and go into uh, ISIS and tell them that they're loved and you know they're just wonderful and, and if they, they just accepted that they're loved they'll be fine and everything will be turned around and ISIS will be saved and they both got killed right 
Um, and that happened a couple of years ago. It's a tragic story, but it's kind of an inevitable story, right? We could have seen that coming. But green is overly idealistic, right? It, it can fail to see that dynamic because it so believes in the power of love and, and peace. And so at the end of the day, though, caring about something and loving doesn't necessarily change things, right? Sometimes you need real tangible solutions, okay? And so um, green can fail to produce real tangible solutions that orange fixates on solutions and, and can often not have any uh, care and love and, and peace in it. Um, but green can lose that tangibility and that, that practicality. And so we're gonna see that coming about as we swing back into orange, uh, into yellow. So if you're orange, don't move, don't avoid moving forward because you're like, oh, this isn't practical. You have to move forward, but you need to get to yellow. So if you want to get to yellow, you're gonna to have to go through this to get to yellow, okay? So um, at the end of the day, you don't have the practical solutions either. You need to go through this process before you're gonna to get to places where you can really bring about the, the best practical solutions, okay? So bear that in mind, okay? So even the, the negatives in this, you might think very poorly of people for having these negatives, but the truth is you um, also have your bunch of negative solutions that this person has the answers to. Um, and so you might not have those negatives yet and you might be reluctant to grow and develop into this something that has those negatives, but you have your own negatives from your own stage, whether it's blue or orange or red or whatever it is. Um, so try not to get too fixated, okay? Try not to get too uh, bogged down here. Now, hollow spirituality can be a problem at stage green. It can be a bit um, a bit wishy-washy. There's no absolute truth. That, that can be so overplayed um, that it fails to see that um, not all truths are necessarily equally true um, or equally relative, right? Um, and so, you know, you have the example of the two people that are going through a divorce and they tell you their sides of the story. Those can be very relative, right? But the fact that everyone jumps out a window and goes down and hits the ground, that's less relative, right? No pun intended. Um, but you know, uh, that's less relative. People go down. Gravity is probably, whilst still we all subjectively experience it, there's an element that every human subjectively experiences it that makes it more um, objective and less relative, less subjective. Um, and so, you know, we, we need to start recognizing at Stage Green that there, there's a lot of nuance to this. Uh, you know, that, that it's not just that there's no truth at all um, or that all truth is exactly the same. Um, so we need to recognize that, yes, there, you know, there's truth in all things, but it doesn't mean that it's as true. And so you could look at something like Nazi Germany or something and say, well, yeah, there was probably some truths in something that Hitler said in a campaign speech at some point. But that way of life and that position and that belief system isn't as true as whatever, you know, as, I don't know, George Bush or Obama or Trump or whoever it is now, right? You know, we should recognize that there's uh, differences going on here and that some things are inherently better and more evolved and more enlightened and uh, more healthy than others. Um, and so, yes, there's truth in all these things, but the amount of truth in all things is not the same. The value that we place on each uh, truth shouldn't necessarily uh, be the same because of that. Um, so green can often fail to see that. Um, it can often abandon discernment and reason because of this. It is so uh, wants to avoid the, the view that there's a superior view um, that it, uh, it, it believes... A, it, it, it avoids superior views to the point where it actually thinks that it's views superior, right? So you'll see this at stage green where it goes, um, you know, we're inclusive. Anyone that's exclusive is wrong. And you go, well, that's not inclusive, right? Um, and so it can't really say that that group is wrong, but it believes it deep down, right? It still believes that the, the, the concept that there are no superior views is made from a superior position which we hold and other people don't. And the concept that, uh, that everyone should be included is made from my position of including people where I get to pick some people that get excluded. You know, there's, there's these nuances involved. Um, it, green can be especially adverse to um, spiral dynamics and, and systems of human psychological development. They, they don't like this. Even though they've gone through it, they fail to see that because they're not at yellow yet. Yellow is the first stage that really sees it properly for what it is. Um, green hates spiral dynamics because it sees the stages as elitist, um, 
and uh, and and just hierarchies, right? And it, and it avoids hierarchies. It can't see these these holons, these these natural hierarchies, these natural developments, these natural growths. Green seems to to demonize that and and be averse to it. So it struggles with something like um, spiral dynamics. So if you're green and you've been watching this, well done. I'm impressed. You're doing well. Um, it it often can be paralyzed by that fear of hierarchies, by that fear of uh, rights and wrongs by that fear of picking what is good and bad um, and so uh, at times um, it can just remain paralyzed it doesn't know what to do it doesn't know how to act it doesn't know what to what to to do um, and so it, it struggles to see unity uh, at times because even though it wants unity even though it wants everything to be together in one there's too much diversity there's too many differences and so it doesn't know how to unify at times it can see some similarities but it's not enough to pull everyone together to create peace to create love and it really struggles with that it can be really paralyzed with that um, it it obviously as we mentioned it, it struggles to uh, distinguish between the mystical and the magical um, so when we talked about people like in the New Age, for example, bringing purple elements in as well as uh, more uh, advanced uh, spirituality, um, it can be quite contemptuous of people that aren't postmodern, right? So it can, like any other stage, it can demonize the other stages. And green is very much able to do that, right? So just as much as um, people who are blue or orange might look at green and go, oh, look at these uh, liberals, hippies, uh, you know, uh, new agers, snowflakes, any kind of, you know, label and slur that people throw at this group that are green. Green on itself, as well as, even though it's all inclusive and it's all loving and all peaceful, it turns around and it looks at people and goes, oh, look at these backwards people, these, you know, regressive, conservative, traditional people that they're just holding back our uh, country, our nation, our, same thing, our, our church, our, uh, our society, whatever, right? I mean, and, and so it can be demonizing on both ends. And this is what we see again and again and again. We talked about how um, uh, Republicans and Democrats are both on that orange uh, cusp of each side. So Republicans tend to be more blue orange and Democrats men tend to be uh, green orange, but both are just as aggressive towards one another at times. And so um, they fail to see the, the dynamics of the spiral and they can demonize one another. And that often sets the other side on the defensive. It pushes them back rather than trying to bring in some, uh, some healthy interaction. Um, and so they need to be very careful because uh, green can just get too caught up in that. They can be very contemptuous towards people that are in blue and orange. And they can at times express themselves in very hateful and angry ways. And so we looked at some ex uh, extremist uh, green positions, you know, like things like Antifa and things like that. Um, it can lead to a little bit of narcissism and meaninglessness. Now, that was huge at stage orange. Um, you know, at orange, it can become very narcissistic. It can be very um, nihilistic. It can be very meaningless. Well, it, the same can happen at stage green, but for very different reasons. Because at stage orange, while nothing is true, at stage green, everything is true. And so, well, what is the point? What, how, why do I exist? Why is the purpose? It, it, because it believes everything, it kind of believes nothing. Um, and that can be a very big issue for stage orange, um, that extreme relativism. Um, it can struggle to make value judgments because it doesn't want to say one thing is right or one thing is wrong. Um, so it's so scared of um, judging and, and, and uh, making these value judgments uh, that it, it fails to make any accurate assessments in life. Um, like I said, that can mean that it becomes 100 miles wide, but just a couple of inches deep. Um, it, while it's true, as Stage Green will be quick to tell you that Jesus didn't criticize other religions, he did criticize his own religion, and Green fails to see that. And so there, there is a reality that while, uh, yes, Jesus was all inclusive, he was actually very, very critical of his own group. And that's a theme that goes right through the Bible. That was the role of the prophet was to speak against God's people, uh, his own group, and say, this is how you're going wrong. This is what you need to change. This is what really needs to happen. And that's what Jesus does. He speaks into his own group and, and criticizes what's wrong. Um, and so Green uh, is, is going to struggle to do that because it, it, can't, uh, it can't healthily criticize uh, when it doesn't want to make any value judgments, doesn't want to say there's any rights and wrongs and truths and, uh, and lies. Um, green can be very emotionally needy 
Okay, so this is this concept of snowflakes where people are triggered easily, they're very sensitive, they're emotionally needy. Um, that is very true of green uh, because green is um, so sensitive because it becomes open, uh, it opens itself up in such a beautiful way and it, and it becomes sensitive in just such a beautiful way. But it's not just sensitive for itself in, in a way that maybe earlier stages were like orange, it's sensitive for everyone. And so now, uh, in the same way that you can really piss off someone at stage orange or blue by saying something that triggers them, well, the problem is with stage green is everything will trigger them. Because if it triggers, if it would upset someone else, it upsets me. Um, and so this is why green has the label of being the easy to trigger group. Now, of course, all of us can be triggered at any stage. We all have our trigger points, right? And I mentioned some of them as, as I go through uh, the working with each stage. Um, but green is very, very easily triggered because even uh, though a green uh, might be, um, say, white, they'll be very triggered by the mistreatment of someone that's black um, because that's about equality. That's about racial equality. You're mistreating a race, a minority or whatever. Um, and so it, whereas maybe at earlier stages, you'd only be triggered if someone was poked in front of you, of your group. Um, and so that's obviously going to create more problems for stage green. Um, as I said, uh, it can be too impractical stage green. So it's, it's the, the phrase too much heart, not enough head is, is very good uh, summary of stage green at times. Uh, it can be too impractical, too, uh, too heart driven, too compassionate, too empathetic and not enough practical, pragmatic action. Um, it's extreme constructivism, right? This view that everything is socially constructed, um, uh, it, it can... It can cause them to struggle to define anything, to really believe anything. Um, and, and there probably is some elements we're starting to maybe be able to prove that aren't necessarily um, all socially constructed. There are maybe some more hard, cold truths to this world than, than, uh, than Green would like to think. Um, so Green really struggles to define its own spirituality and that really hurts it and holds it back at times, especially because it desires a spirituality. It's, it's the first stage to really start flourishing and desiring spirituality again after Orange, but it struggles to define what it has and what it believes because it doesn't want to uh, write off anything. Um, they believe in God, but they can't talk about God. Uh, they believe in God and they can't talk with God. Um, and, and that creates... Um, while it creates meaningful discussion about God, it becomes, uh, it becomes in some ways very hard to have that discussion. Uh, it becomes very hard to uh, communicate what you believe. It becomes very hard to um, connect with that God. It becomes very hard to connect with other people about what you believe about God. It, it creates a real gray area where you're not really sure how to um, operate spiritually in a group even, which is again a huge drive off green and a huge desire of green. So it can lead to quite an identity crisis uh, green, um, that everyone is equal, uh, but my ability to discern that everyone is equal makes me a little bit better than everyone. Um, some of those elements, some of those inconsistencies within green, you know, I, I, uh, I think all paths leave to God, but I don't really know what God is. I'm not really sure, you know, all these kind of things make it very complex and hard for green. All right, let's look at some transformational dilemmas and how to work with green, and then we'll uh, wrap up. Um, so how do you transcend green? How do you start moving into yellow? Well, you're gonna to want to watch the next video, Stage Yellow, to understand what Stage Yellow is. But generally speaking, um, you're gonna swing back to a more individualistic mindset. It's gonna be very uh, global mindset again, because it's gonna transcend and include the prior stages. Because it, Yellow uh, understands that the, the dynamics of stages and development and, and growth, and that this is going on, that it's going through these stages, it's gonna be the first stage that really um, really manages to transcend and include well. It's gonna start including all the prior stages and look for what's good in its journey and try and incorporate that. So yellow is gonna be really quite a healthy, very healthy stage. Um, so uh, to transform green, we're gonna to have to see that there's, um, there's a limit, uh, there's a limit to how much emotionality can serve you. There is an excess emotionality which, will, uh, which can be reached and actually holds you back. There, um, there needs to be a awareness that, um, that green can end up becoming a bit mob mentality-ish. You know, it becomes a bit kind of like, well, whatever the mob is deciding is right and wrong, that becomes what's right and wrong. It can um, try and 
get everyone stirred up and let's go march and you know try and make action but often doesn't actually see any action you know so you'd look at something like um remember the um uh what was the protest called against the one percent on wall street uh oh my brain it'll come to me later um it's gonna kill me a bit it's, it's something really obvious that i've almost said as well um Occupy Wall Street, duh. Right, so you know, things like that, the Occupy movement, very green movement, right? Oh, this is a, the excesses of capitalism, this isn't good for the planet, it's not good for the people, it's not good for the general people. You know, all this inequality, the top 400 people in the country have more wealth than half the other population. Uh, you know, it, it, it's insanity, like this needs to change. But did anything change because of that? You know, you see months and months and months of people occupying Wall Street and doing protests, nothing changed. And so we're going to need to see that that doesn't always actually bring change. And we're going to need to transcend and start moving into yellow, which is going to then become very practical about all these elements. So it's still OK with protests. It's still OK with all this action and all this caring. But it's going to become very pragmatic about, well, how are we going to build systems that change? How are we going to do things that change these things? Um, green needs to start discerning, uh, gr developing greater discernment that all perspectives aren't equal. It's gonna to have to start realizing that's not working for me to believe everything is on equal footing because it isn't. It's gonna to need to start noticing natural hierarchies and distinguish them from man-made hierarchies. Yes, there are some man-made socially constructed hierarchies, but there are also very real um, uh, natural hierarchies and that's okay. And, and we need to distinguish between those and, and understand that some of those are just the way it is. And even these, uh, these uh, natural, uh, the, even these uh, man-made or, or human-made, and maybe I've triggered some greens in there by man-made, but you know, even these humanly constructed uh, hierarchies at times are helpful for the stage that we're in. Um, and so we can't just always demonize them black and white. Uh, frustration with fruitless activism, activism, as I said, that, that can really drive people into the next stage to just get fed up. I'm constantly protesting, I'm constantly doing all this stuff, but it's not making the change I need. Um, realizing you can't solve mankind's issues at this level, right? You're not going to uh, stop global warming at this level. You're not going to um, establish, you know, healthcare for all at this level in a in a healthy way that's going to work for everyone. Uh, you have to recognize that to get these goals met, you must move on. You're going to have to transcend. Um, there needs to be a shift from focusing on community back towards. Uh, individual ideas, individual uh, people thinking and processing and coming up with concepts and ideas and applying those ideas. So um, yes, relationships are important, but these ideas are at the heartbeat of all these relationships and how we can have these relationships. Um, when green becomes uh, self-aware that it's one of many perspectives um, and that it itself is just as lost in its own perspective as the other ones are, um, that's when it starts to shift into yellow, when it starts to see that it's part of a process, when it starts to see the spiral, green can start to move into stage yellow. Um, and so, yes, there are many perspectives, but it's held its own perspective as an elite perspective and it needs to let go of that. So it might recognize, oh, yeah, there's all these perspectives, but my perspective is right. My understanding is right. My way of doing things is right. Um, my inclusivity is correct or whatever it is that green holds as its ultimate idea that it seems blind to that it's putting above other things as it talks about everything there being no truth and being no absolutes um, people often struggle to grow spiritually at this stage um, because they're trying to be all things to all people and so to transcend you're going to have to let go of that a little bit. You're gonna to have to let go of trying to serve everyone, to love everyone, to be kind to everyone, to be empathetic and compassionate to all. You're gonna to have to be a bit selfish. You're gonna to have to focus on yourself a little bit. And, and that will swing you back towards that egotistical side of the spiral um, that is stage yellow. It's gonna become a bit more egotistical and it's still gonna be very global in its perspective, but it's gonna have that individual focus. Um, and so be aware of that as well. So what if you're working with green? Well, if you're orange, you're gonna really, really, really really struggle. I could have put about 100 more reallys in. Really struggle with the mindset that green is above orange or uh, uh, it will think that green should be below. Now I'm putting above and below in air quotes because it's not about above, below, better, worse, good, bad. I keep saying that, but green won't see that. Orange won't see that. Blue won't see that. Red won't see that. Purple won't see that. Beige can't see it. You know, it's only at yellow that you can step right out of hierarchical thinking and and step out of um, 
out of things being better or worse or right or wrong, at, at yellow you start to go, oh wow, this is all good. It's all really good for whoever is at that stage to be at that stage. But if you're orange, you're gonna really, really dislike the idea that those people, the, that liberal, that hippie, that whatever label you use, that they are, they're better. You're saying they're better than me because they're higher on the spiral? That's definitely not, like, they must be lower. They've got to be, you know, they're just blue in a different costume, you know? And, and, and it's gonna be really, really hard for Orange to accept that. And, and the truth is that's what makes it really hard for Orange to grow. It's one of the biggest um, uh, transform transformational dilemmas that I mentioned for Orange is, is understanding that, that uh, green is the next stage of its growth. And like I said, you're gonna to want to focus on the pros and try and not focus on the cons. And that's a really great dynamic in how to interact with green, is focus on the good elements of green that you agree with, that you like, that you, you love, that you see are good things, and focus on those, connect over those, try not to fixate over the negative. Excuse me, blue is terrified of stage green, um, so blue struggles to work with stage green for very different reasons because its views are so liberal and so progressive and so world focused that it um, it challenges blues in crowds, you know, my culture, my community, my church, my denomination, uh, my set of faith rules, my gods, my nationality. That's all challenged by stage green thinking, right? Um, and so blue is terrified because it's all about maintaining status quo, keeping safe, keeping secure, keeping and certain and green blows all that out of the water so blue is going to really struggle as well so generally speaking people are going to really struggle to work with green if you're a stage green you're going to really want to um, be thinking about how you can soften your approach and engage with these people because you're going to really hold them back from growing potentially um, but generally speaking if you're stage orange stage blue um, obviously stage yellow is going to be thinking about this but stage yellow is going to be aware of these stages so it's easier for stage yellow to become more green for a green and interact with them um, but if you're orange and blue, um, you need to be aware that stage green is going to be easily triggered, right? That's that snowflake mentality, you know, right? that, that language. It, it is there for a reason. They, they are easily triggered because they are sensitive to injustice. They're sensitive to other people being hurt and, and mistreated and, and, and inequalities. And so you need to be careful that you are not coming across selfish, that you're not abusing the rights of people, that you're not... Um, uh, promoting some form of inequality, that you're not going to be racist or sexist or uh, bigotry, a uh, bigotist or anything like that, you know, xenophobic. Um, you want to be really careful that you're not coming across as that. And that's, that's going to build you into a better person to be aware of those things. Um, you want to be careful you're not excluding people, right? You want to make sure you don't violate people's human rights or joke about these things and laugh about these things. Even just joking and laughing about these things around green can be really triggering. Now, there's actually a, 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 there's, there's a vehicle for comedy to, to bring humor into these situations. It can often help us soften, it can help us grow, it can raise awareness of these things, it can make them more poignant by making them farcical, right? So we can laugh about it and then go, wait, oh, that is quite deep and I need to rethink what I'm thinking. So I'm not saying, you know, there's not a role for comedy in this, but generally speaking, um, something that blue and orange fall into the trap of a lot is they love to wind green up, right? So they're going to make a racist joke just to wind up a green person, right? That's how they think. Um, they, they, they just think, oh, look at this, these easily triggered people, let's wind them up, let's, let's frustrate them. But what they fail to see is they're just creating more and more resistance for them to grow. They're forcing themselves back into their regressive, um, uh, they're, they're regressing back into their current state. They're digging a hole that they're going to have to climb out of later. Um, and so they need to be really careful of that. Um, you want to be careful of, um, you know, promoting unjust wars and inequality and, and, and speaking well of uh, particular figures that are very anti-green, very, uh, uh, very, um, big on inequality you want to maybe be careful about how you present your capitalistic tendencies or how you don't really care about all oh, that nation who cares it doesn't really matter or things like that that's going to be something you want to be really careful with what you bring about um you're going to be careful with how you talk about spirituality um you know it's going to be easy for you to go oh, that seems crazy what you like that's new age or things like, you're going to write them off you're going to you're going to shut them down by by doing that you're better off to listen to engage you might learn something worst case scenario you disagree and you just smile and nod you know um but it's better to engage with people about the things that they're passionate about than shut them down and and, and ridicule and mock them um it's you know key that you 
uh, maybe don't burn some plastic bags around them or whatever, you know, but try and be um, more environmentally conscious. You know, if you go out for coffee with, uh, with uh, someone that's at green, bring your own mug rather than using a disposable cup, right? Or use a or put it in a recyclable bin after not the regular bin. That's gonna really win you some points with someone at stage green. They're gonna go, oh, wow, oh, you care about the environment too. That connects you, it bonds you. It's gonna create more opportunity for you to connect and, and work with them and, and engage with them and grow together. Um, making sure that you uh, don't uh, have too much of a lack of empathy, right? Try and work on your empathy. Try to empathize with a green person because that's gonna really help you connect with them on multiple levels, right? Having empathy helps you connect, but actually they value empathy, so that's gonna help you connect as well. Um, making sure you don't exclude people, um, including people that are excluded will give you great points when working with people that are green. Um, uh, being generous, focusing on uh, Overturning inequalities like poverty, you know, homelessness, uh, orphans, widows, giving uh, to these kind of organizations, giving your time, your effort, that's gonna really score you a lot of points with green, okay? Because green is all about that. Um, and at the end of the day, that's a really good thing to do one way or the other, right? We, I think we can all agree on that. Um, and so just be really careful, okay? Be careful of your tendency to try and want to wind green up because it is really, really common for people at these early ages to try and, and aggravate green and, and wind them up. It, it seems to be a, a bit of a sport uh, it, that doesn't seem to work the other way. Green tends not to want to wind up uh, blues and oranges. It may do it at times, but it, it's not a, as much of a focus, whereas that seems to be part of uh, blue and, and oranges mentality at times and it can be really unhealthy uh, and it just really it further entrenches you in your state right as you digging a hole that you're gonna have to climb out later and so as i said try not to label to pigeonhole to demonize uh, and try to be open to uh, stage green because this is the stage that you're going to have to grow through if you're going to keep growing if you're going to get to um, yellow and beyond which you're going to want to right because these are the stages that have the answers to your current problems these are the stages that will bring you into a greater level of uh, development uh, where you can be more effective in this world, you can do more great things, you can connect with God in a more real and tangible way. All these things that uh, we all want to some degree and are hoping to aspire to, they require us to go through these stages. And so be careful you're not demonizing green uh, so much that it makes, you, it makes it impossible for you to grow through it. All right, let's stop there and uh, I'll see you in the next video, Stage Yellow.